He's got three. He's got two. He gets the snap in time. He's back. He's going to throw it. Near sideline in his clock. Running it out of bounds at the 25-yard line is Hosea Hurd. And with two seconds left, the Panthers now have a 42-yard field goal try forthcoming to tie this game. Eddie Frazier will be trying a field goal from the left hash mark. 42, 43. 40, 42 and a half. We'll call it 42 yards. Two seconds left. Hetzler to hold. Huebner to snap. The snap, the ball's down. Fraser kicks it. It's long. It's high. And it's good! Oh, boy. Eddie Fraser has tied the game on the last play of the game. Eddie Fraser, a 42-yard field goal. This place is shocked, stunned, and silent. And the Panthers celebrate one of the great comebacks in Pitt football history. We have a 31-31 final score tie. What a football game! JP Sports presents the best college football in the Northeast. Great American independent football. Today's game is brought to you by Rolling Rock Beer. From the Mountain Springs to you, same as it ever was. By Buick and your Buick dealer. The Great American Road belongs to Buick. By Gillette, the makers of Gillette Atra Plus Shaving System and Gillette Foamy Shave Cream. Together, the best a man can get. And by Isuzu, the first car builders of Japan. Live from Veteran Stadium in Philadelphia, it's another afternoon of great American independent football as the Pitt Panthers take on the Owls from Temple. It's homecoming at Temple. The homecoming crowd hopes that this day we'll see a turnaround in the fortunes of this football team that sits right now at 0-5. And the job is going to be tough for them this afternoon, taking on a Pitt team that is 3-0-1 and, and a Pitt team that is coming off a win over Syracuse, a tie with West Virginia done, as we described in dramatic fashion, coming through with 22 points in the ninth quarter, in the fourth quarter. I'm Steve Martin along with Bob Cassiola and Bob when you look at Pitt you look at a team that may be ripe for a letdown and that's got Mike uh, Gottfried concerned. It has him concerned but quite frankly I think he's prepared this week. Last week believe it or not he felt there was a little bit of a letdown after the victory against Syracuse the week before they got so much national attention the media TV and everything and also the attention that was brought on their young quarterback Van Pelt. They felt that perhaps they got their mind off West Virginia a little bit early. I don't think Mike Gottfried's going to let that happen. One because now he's nationally ranked he knows what it means and he also has had trouble in the past with Temple so he comes in here I think fully prepared to play football you know Temple has won three out of the uh, last five meetings between these two teams and uh, also you look at Temple coming into this ball game they are 0 and 5 Houston did everything in the world to them last week they can't go anywhere but up Jerry Burns had a tough time but he expected it wouldn't be easy particularly with the schedule that he has here and he said this week that his team pretty much is bottomed out they're looking forward to bouncing back looking at some of the teams they can come back against realistically Pitt is a tough one but he may today show some changes he may alternate his quarterbacks he may come in with young Anthony uh, Anderson at quarterback and, and, and show besides Victor Lay and I think that kind of thing may surprise a few people and of course Pitt has got a great quarterback and you saw him a little bit earlier Alex Van Pelt. He's outstanding. Lorenzo Square, linebacker for Temple, who is also outstanding. We'll see him a lot. Jerry Byrne hopes not too much this afternoon. But we've got the kickoff coming up in just a few minutes. Of course, we've got uh, the game between Pittsburgh and Temple this afternoon. Pitt coming up against Navy next week and a very tough schedule they're in after. So this is a very important game for Pitt. Particularly as they look for the kind of recognition they want, not only in the East, but across the country. And I know that Mike Gottfried has prepared his club today. As he says, everybody's got to be on focus, and that's the big word. Stay on focus with your schedule and Temple getting ready to focus on a possible win this afternoon. We'll see if it happens. It's Temple and Pitt and it's at Veteran Stadium. We'll be back with a kickoff right after this. Aye, 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 aye. <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> hey Dave, where'd you get that chin? What's wrong with my chin? Where'd you get that nose? It's Dad's. How do you shave under that thing? Now there's a razor as unique as the Thomas face. The new Slim Twin razor system. Slim Twin has the slimmest cartridge to shave hard to reach places and a choice of pivot or fixed head shaving. Dave, I'd give Dad back his nose. <laughs> What's wrong with my nose? <laughs> new Slim Twin reaches every place on every face. From Schick.
Nothing's too good for my baby. Nothing. So my baby gets very special treatment. There's a gasoline so special, it even exceeds BMW's detergency standard. Fill it up. Ultra. Sunoco Ultra 94. Clean power from the highest octane under the sun. Nothing else can match it. Nothing. What's for lunch? Thumins. What's for lunch? Thumins. What's for lunch? Thumins. I only want the best for my family. Thumins coal cuts are extremely lean. No artificial coloring, lower in salt, there's absolutely no MSG. And the kids just love them. What's for lunch? Give us a couple of rolling rocks, please. Repeat after me. We tender this premium beer. We tender this premium beer for your enjoyment. For your enjoyment. As a tribute to your good taste. As a tribute to your good taste. It comes from the mountain springs. It comes from the mountain springs. To you. To you. 33. 33? I now pronounce you man and beer. Rolling Rock. Same as it ever was. Welcome back to Veterans Stadium in Philadelphia. And Temple is pulling out all the stops here, Bob Castillo, as you see down on the sidelines. The most illustrious alumnus. There he is, Bill Cosby. Word has it that he went in the locker room before the game to give them their pregame talk. So they're all back for homecoming, including Mr. Cosby. And he's uh, talking to the pit cheerleaders right now, asking them to do all they can to help on defense for the Temple Isles this afternoon. But it is Temple and Pitt going at it. Pitt is going to receive. They have won the opening toss as you look at Jerry Burnt. Burnt has done an outstanding job here in Philadelphia before at Penn with a 29 and 18 record and four Ivy League titles either shared or outright outright when there you see Mike Gottfried. And Mike's story has been well documented in his fourth season of course at Pittsburgh where he has amassed a record of 22 and 14 at 71 53 and 4. He's known as a program builder Bob. He's done a great job wherever he's gone. Very patient has done a great job of recruiting. He's an excellent recruiter and that's what you see on this club. You see an accumulation of athletes over the last couple of three years that are starting to blend. Everybody thought when Dickerson went as a quarterback that that was the, those were the fortunes of Pitt football but quite honestly they've got a lot of players on his team both sides of the football and that's what's brought him back this year along of course with the tremendous development of a very young quarterback in Van Pelt. Exactly. As we get set to see Temple kick off here this afternoon and Temple's chores in that area handled by Bob Wright as you see out of Philadelphia. He's three out of six in the field goal department. I haven't had an occasion to use him that often. Back deep receiving for Pitt is going to be Henry Tootin and Alonzo Hampton. the kick and it is going to be Adam Walker instead of the four yard line picks it up and goes up the left sideline Walker breaking tackles he's out to the 27 yard line and that's where Pitt will come out here first and 10 after a 25 yard return and on the tackle is going to be James Harris on the special teams for Temple and there you see Alex Van Pelt and what a season Van Pelt has had he's completed 65 percent of his passes he's thrown for a thousand and twenty nine and those are four game total he had four interceptions last week. That pulled his efficiency down a little bit, but he is really one outstanding redshirt freshman. Back behind him, Kervin Richards, the outstanding tailback. That helped to throw on first. Looking downfield, has his man complete, Henry Tutin at the 48 yard line of Temple, and for Tutin. Fred Gunter is the man who tackles him. And let's take a look at the lineup now. After a 21-yard gain to Tootin, there's the backfield and the running backs. Up front, they have Batuz, an experienced left tackle. Chris Getz, Caliguire, so good, they moved him over to guard. And Chris Sestelli, Mike Laverio at the tackle positions. Big and experienced in three of those players. Derek Lewis is in at fullback. Orlando Truitt is in motion. This is Kervin Richards. Hit at the line of scrimmage and driven back. Gary Mobley is in on the tackle along with Greg Angeli. Greg, an outstanding outside linebacker for Temple. Let's take a look at that front three. Kenyatta Rush is a good one. Mike Constantatos is a good one as well. Eric Warren playing in 
place of Swift Rush. Aranzo Square, of course, that's the name. You'll call it a lot today because they free up their defense so that he can be in on many of the tackles. And, of course, the defensive backfield with Gunter and Mobley at the corner. Gunter, a converted wide receiver. Truett on second and nine. In motion, Van Pelt to Richards. Swerve and Kerbin gets to the 49, a flag down on the play. Lorenzo Square was one of those who hit him, and Angeli was there too, along with Mike Constantatos. This is what Jerry Bird wants. He wants to maintain field position. He wants to get the football back as soon as he can, get his offense on, keep his defense off the field. Going to be a hold against Pitt as they talk with Lorenzo Square about things. Square far surpasses the tackles that anybody on this team has with 54 as Mike Gottfried looks on. 54, 37 of those are solo tackles. Gottfried concerned because at times in his early career at Pitt, his teams have, have tended to have some penalties. Calling on the offense, still second down. And this changes a second down back to second and long back at his own 39-yard line. Nickel package coming in now for... Temple on defense. Keita Crespina comes in as the extra defensive back, and they'll pull a lineman out. Second down and 20. That help. Draw play to Richards. Richards at the 45. Gets his way to the 45-yard line and no more. In on the stop, John Armstrong, a man they call the eraser in that defensive secondary for Temple Mates, a nice stop. Interesting call. Came out with wide outs to both sides, split backs, normal passing set. They run a little draw play, good blocking up front, excellent block by Sestelli. 51 the center, getting the linebacker, giving Richards a chance to get a few extra yards. Got about seven out to the 46. That'll bring up third down at about 13. Side linebacker gets his way back to the 50 yard line and Kenyatta Rush, the left defensive tackle, who's made 22 stops thus far this season, makes a nice shoulder pad catch at the 49 of Tim. This time they draw to the fullback 26 going on the left side. Look at that block by the left guard gets. He buries the right defensive tackle, Eric Warren, for Temple, but the linebackers come up and rush from the defensive tackle left position, makes the play. And big play by the Temple defense. They've held him, they're forcing Pitt early in this ballgame to punt. Kevin McCoy is back deep to receive the kick of Brian Greenfield, who comes in here with a 45 8 average. Kicking for field position. McCoy will let it drop, and it is going to be brought down at the 22 yard line. Not exactly what Greenfield had in mind, a 26 yard punt. Does not go inside the 20. And the Temple defense is getting set to come out. No score early on in the fourth quarter, first quarter here at Veterans Stadium. It's a feeling of power, of substance and style. You know that you're on your way. The great American road belongs. With Farmore's quality film developing, you can save a lot of memories. And with Farmore's low everyday prices, you can save a lot of cash. You get the Kodak Color Watch system and genuine Kodak paper for far less. And you get a guarantee. Next day service on single, twin, and supersized prints, or they're free. So take your pictures, then take them to Farmore. Same as it ever was. 
Now we're back at Veterans Stadium in Philadelphia. Temple on the field offensively for the first time. There you see Victor Lay bringing out the Owls on offense. He's completed 42% of his passes thus far this season. Thrown five interceptions, yet to find anybody in the end zone with one. And he sits at his own 22-yard line, first and 10. Long count, back to throw. Pumps once, pumps twice. And then lost the handle, it looked like, as Carnell Smith was really putting on some pressure. Let's take a look at the offensive lineup now for Temple. As you look at that offensive lineup, of course, in the backfield, you've got Lay, the quarterback, Hale, the fullback, and Ventress Stevens, an outstanding tailback. Good receivers in Drayton and Maurice Johnson coming into this season regarded as one of the top tight ends in the country. The experience here is at right tackle with Ray Haynes and at left guard with Kulikowski. The interesting the battle between Haynes and Mark Spindler this afternoon as we look at the pit defense here in a moment. Here's Lay on second down. And off Ventress Stevenson. Threads his way over the 25-yard line and picks up some pretty good yardage out to the 27. Tackled by Carnell Smith. And it'll be a gain on the play of about four brings up second and six. Defensively, let's look at those linebackers. Bray, of course, an outstanding freshman last year. Now a sophomore, still highly regarded. And up front, of course, Spinless Siragusa. Experience there. Keith Hamilton has come on very strong at the end position. And, of course, the outstanding player in Carnell Smith. The defensive backfield. Hampton, one of the best cornerbacks in the country. Coming up third and six for Temple. Lay going back. Rolls to his left, has his man. It looks like Johnson completing the flats, the tight end, and it looks like he's going to have enough for the first down. It is, and Bradley is the man who made the stop for Pitt. Maurice Johnson at 6'3", 240, very quick. Comes out to the, you'll see him on the right side of your screen. He just blocks for a second, then he releases into the flat. He's open early. This is the control type passing game that Victor Lay needs to get under control himself so he gets a little confidence and keeps the ball moving upfield. First down, Temple. They like to get the ball in Maurice Johnson's hands a little more. Here comes a draw play to the fullback. And it's not going very far at all. Efren Cabrera out of Keyport, New Jersey, a freshman who scored a 52-yard touchdown against Houston a week ago. That's his way up over the 35-yard to, line to the 36. Temple's offensive line really has a, a big chore today. They've got to try and pass pro some outstanding down linemen in Spindler, Siragusa, and Sims, and occasionally have to pick up on defensive end Smith and Hamilton, who put pressure from the corner. Then they got to try and run block them. It's really a tough chore for any offensive line. Temple's got their hands full right now. Second and nine from the 36. Leg is the Ventress Stevenson. And Stevenson goes down in the arm tackle of Ricardo McDonald just beyond the 36-yard line to about the 37. Little, so McDonald makes a stop. A little counteraction that time, trying to freeze up, pull Lyman through, but number 48, McDonald, so quick, so quick, fill that hole, came right behind his defensive line to make the hit. And there are the stats on him. 13 solos this year, 18 total tackles. Got a great work ethic. Patterson Ricardo Richards. McDonald, there he is, yes. Third down coming up at about nine. Two split receivers to the top side, Leslie Shepard and Kevin McCoy. For the third over there with him, and Lay looks over instead to the left where he's got his man, Rich Drayton. Drayton picks out the defensive back and gets into pick territory. Brought down at the 40-yard line by Dan Crossman, the strong safety after a 23-yard game. Lots of credit goes to the Temple offensive line. They gave Victor Lay enough time to give the receiver, Drayton, a chance to go down and run a deep square pattern to the sideline. He was open. They were in zone coverage, caught the ball. Rich Drayton, leading receiver last year, came into this game with 14 catches. There's the moves. They really haven't had time to find him. If he gets into the ball game, it could be interesting early on here for Temple. Temple, first and 10. receiver in the game as they go this time with Cabrera once more and Cabrera gets some pretty nice yardage up over the 40 to the 37 and we've got a flag on the play as Mark Spindler brought Cabrera down and it looks like it could be a face man. I think number 48 Ricardo McDonald reached in very casually he didn't it wasn't delivered at all and grabbed the face, face mask penalty on the defense it's a five-yard penalty but, but look what Temple has achieved couple of first downs, and they've got a drive moving off the field, aided by a penalty. Let's watch Mark Spindler. Watch him move the last minute, change the alignment. They go from an odd look to an even look. He comes over the center, or the guard-center combination, plays off the block, makes the hit. Mark Spindler. And there's the phase, Matt, as 48 McDonald comes in and just 
glances across it. If he doesn't make that move, there's a big hole there. And of course, he offset that with a face mask situation, so it's going to be first down at the 32, a five yard penalty for the face mask. Lay back to throw. Lay to the flats, complete to Johnson. Johnson steps out of bounds at the 25 yard line, and another flag on the play. It's going to go against McDonald again. That time it was a late hit. Good use of the tight end. They put the tight end in motion that time. Let's listen to the official. Well, personal foul on the defense. It's a late hit, out of bounds. That's John Safi, who is the referee. But here, the, the tight end coming in motion to the right of the screen. Drop back action by Lay. Sets up here. He comes down, turns back to the football right on the sideline. As he steps along, there's the late hit by 48. And the official calls it. And watch them doubling up on Spindler. The center back working with the right guard, Andy Waldron, number 52. And they're working on him all the time. But when you double a guy like that, you're going to free up a linebacker sooner or later. Pittsburgh, late in the game against West Virginia, started to come after him. They may have to do that now. And one of the things that uh, Temple has done on four first downs, they passed twice. And this time successfully, the penalty, the third for Pitt, puts Temple at the Pitt 12-yard line. And off Stevenson. Straight ahead, breaks the plane at the 10, and is brought down by Craig Dobb, along with others, at the 8-yard line. Also, Lewis Riddick. Good change in the offense, moving the football on the ground a little bit, dropping back, throwing the short control passing game, giving their quarterback a little time, giving protection. That's something that Temple just hasn't been able to do is establish that running game. When you're down 27 nothing to Houston, you don't get a chance to run an awful lot. Roman Hale in the backfield now, out of the eye formation. Second down, here is Ventress Stevenson. He just charges into a hole off left, off right tackle, brought down by Spindler and Hamilton. What a hit by Spindler. Did he stand up the left guard and left tackle? Watch as we isolate on Spindler. Watch 93 on the top of your screen come off the block of 52 Waldron and get into the hole. You can't do it any better than that. Helped out, of course, by Curtis Bray, 58, the linebacker. Tough, tough defense. Brings up third down and four now for Temple. Bob Wright getting set to warm up on the sidelines. Victor Lay, both ends in tight. Roll out, steps up, goes to the end zone, and Johnson incomplete. Covering on the play, outside linebacker Prentice Wright. The, the, the Temple sideline was looking quickly. They wanted timeout on that play. Victor Lay never saw it. Here's the motion. Watch the tight end at the top of the screen break into the flat. Excellent coverage by number seven, Prentice Wright, the junior out of Orlando, Florida. He's got good, tight coverage on him, forces the elevation of the ball. Tough pass to complete. Temple forced now to go for three. And they'll do it from 24 yards out. Bob Wright on the kick. He's three for six, and he's better the farther out he's in. Here comes the kick. It is up, and it is good. And Temple takes the early lead as Temple leads by a score of three to nothing. And we'll be back here to Veterans Stadium in Philadelphia after we pause for a word from your local station. A Pittsburgh National Home Equity Credit Line can turn your house into a bigger one with a low 9.75% introductory rate. Turn it into a new car and drive away with some big tax savings. Or turn it into almost anything else. Because you pay no closing costs, you'll save hundreds of dollars right away. So visit or call and turn this extraordinary loan application into just about anything at Pittsburgh National. Every McDonald's Quarter Pounder, every McDLT, starts with lean, all-American beef grilled to perfection. That's the meat of America's meat and potatoes, only at McDonald's. There's a big sports event right now at McDonald's. Buy a large sandwich and large Coke and get a 22-ounce thermal sports mug for just $1.09. They're perfect for hot coffee or ice-cold Coke, but hurry, they're going fast. 
Well, there's a scoring drive, an impressive nearly four minute drive, and the field goal by Bob Wright is fourth of the season. 11 plays, 70 yards. There were three pit penalties en route. And that is not going to make Mike Godfrey very happy at all this afternoon. He wanted his team, especially after last week's tie with West Virginia, to come out strong. Not happy about the penalties, I'm sure. Those two penalties hurt. It's to stay in the drive for Temple, and those are the kind of mistakes you can't afford to have, and that's concentration. But there's plenty of time left. It's going to get their hands on the football, and uh, for Temple, very important that they scored on that first drive. Confidence, yes, and also they kept the football, and that's what Jerry Burton wants to do today. He wants to hold the football a little bit, sustain some drives, keep the pit offense off the field. Junior Green, Adam Walker back to catch the kick of Bob Wright. That's Walker one yard deep, comes out to the 15, and he's brought down at about the 16-yard line. You tell me by the reaction of the Temple players if that field goal and that score on that drive didn't do something for him. And Mike Godfrey wasn't too happy with Adam Walker. He felt he should have stayed in the end zone that time. Sean Andrews is the man in on the stop for Temple. First and 10 now for Pitt back at their own 16-yard line. It's Alex Van Pelt brings out a high-powered Pitt offense, which is averaging through the air almost 100 yards more than they did last year. And they're throwing the backs and tight ends and the... Uh, Really spreading it out. The influence of offensive coordinator Paul Hackett has developed some great quarterbacks in the NFL. Joe Montana, Brian Seip, being felt to Alex Van Pelt. Here is Richard. Richards turns the corner. Gets some running room out to the 20-yard line. Fred Gunter is there. Ball was loose for a minute, but play is blown dead as Lorenzo Square shows the official the ball. You know, Richards limps off a little. Yeah, he got hit low, and he really got his legs taken out from under him. Freddie Gunter, Freddie Gunter, number five, is the cornerback here. Watch his little toss sweep into the sideline, into the boundary. Watch number five. He makes his cut. Beautiful cut there by Richards. And there comes number five. See how he catches his leg underneath? It was the hit by Gunter, the cornerback. Richards is out. Second down and six. Unloaded setback. That's Adam Walker. Walker still moving. Got the first down. Dropped at the 28-yard line. John Armstrong is the man who came in and made the stop after Walker picked up first down yard. Adam Walker, the senior out of Homestead, Pennsylvania, a couple a year ago, he was the starter. He was the guy they were going to go to. He got hurt and he never got back in because arriving on the scene was Curvin Swervin Richards. There you see Curvin on the sidelines trying to shake off that injury early on that very day, and we saw that game. It was Pitt Boston College at Boston. He ran for 200 yards. Here's the toss now to Walker. Walker barely makes the corner. He'll barely get back to the line of scrimmage if he did that at the 27. Kenyatta rush. The big tackle came up to make the play. The tight end that time, Eric Seaman, could not handle rush. The junior out of Philadelphia at 6'4", 260. Played off the block perfectly and made a one-on-one -on -one shot. Kept it to no gain. Ricky Turner is in the backfield now for Pitt. Derek Lewis is at fullback. Split wide to the bottom of your screen. That's Henry Toot. Second down coming up in 10 for Pitt. And help. And off. Goes to Turner. It's a nice cut to the outside. It is brought down at the 34-yard line. And a tackle there by Greg Taylor and also John Armstrong. Here's the depth in the, in the, in the Pitt team when you look at it. Here is the, the sophomore, Ricky Turner. A tailback 35. Look at that agility. They call him a gifted runner. Look at the speed to the outside, and he turns what looked like a loss or no gain into a five yard gain. And now Alex Van Pelt is looking at third and five. You see, he's from Harrisburg. All at the 34 yard line. Van Pelt to throw. Van Pelt looking as a man open. That was Truett, but he underthrew him in the flash at the 48 yard line. Fred Gunter covering for Temple, so it brings Mr. Greenfield back on to kick for the Panthers. Zone coverage by Temple that time. Gunter gave the receiver lots of room, and the ball was thrown a little bit short, going to the left by the quarterback, Van Pelt. Kevin McCoy is back deep to receive the kick of Brian Greenfield. Greenfield got off a 26-yarder the first time up. Temple leading here, three to nothing, on a nice march of 11 plays after a pit punt that brought them down at the 22-yard line. There's the kick by Greenfield. Fair catch called for by Hornbach. 
Hornbaker is the man who made the catch at the 34 yard line. It's a 30 yard punt and Temple's offense comes out with a lot of confidence leading here by a score of three to nothing at the vet. OK, you're trying to decide between the Jeep Cherokee and the Isuzu Trooper. Let's weigh the facts, shall we? The Isuzu Trooper comes standard with four wheel disc brakes and triple skid plates, more cargo space, a larger fuel tank and more headroom. Oh, <laughs> and one more thing. The Isuzu Trooper costs about a thousand dollars less. Right now, you can save big bucks on the Trooper during Isuzu's Take It to the Bank sale. There's a special breed of people who do battle day after day. Their arena, the business world. Their territory, the road. They are the road warriors. Ray? Ray Cave! On the road again, huh? Three cities this week. Hey, Mary Hansen, sales director for land. Hi! And Howard Johnson is the place the road warrior chooses when he gets ready for the road. Again and again. Howard Johnson, home of the road warriors. When whippoorwills call Blue That evening Blue here heaven. tonight I heard it tonight Blue Heaven La Bats Blue A turn to the light Will lead you to my Imported beer my From Canada Thirty-two left to go in the first quarter. There you see the average offensive output for the Pitt Panthers this season: thirty-two to seventeen. And their opponents, of course, Owls of Temple, have averaged five point four. And then Houston, sixty-five, didn't do their defensive average any help. All right, pick delay, first and ten, going for it all. He's going deep for Shepard, and he overthrew him. Covered there by Bradley for Pitt. That was just to, to get up on top, see if he could shake him loose, get the defenders a little bit back, and perhaps come back with a short passing game. It's going to be very hard to go deep against Israel and Hampton, particularly the cornerbacks for Pitt, two very fine athletes. If Mike Gottfried's got a concern, Bob Belicente, as defensive coordinator, told us it's the defense of the long ball that has hurt Pitt thus far this season. Although Bradley was in coverage, the ball was overthrown. Second down and 10. Victor Lay gives to Ventre Stevenson. He runs into a wall. Curtis Bray was the first man he hit, but then he spun away and got up to about the 38-yard line. Bray and Mark Spindler hit on the tackle. For and that's what you're going to call. You're going to call those linebackers, Bray and McDonald and Gobb, and then you got Siragusa, Sims, and Spindler up front, and they just stop people in their tracks, and you got to look for a little bit of a seam to break it. That time, Ventre Stevenson really couldn't find anything. Also, you've got to watch for Pitt to do one other thing that is rather peculiar, and they may do it on the next series, and that is use their platoon defense, their 1A defense. They replace the entire 11. They say it makes them pressure in the fourth. Third down. Victor Lay over the middle for his tight end Johnson ball. Tip taken by Bradley at the 50. And Pitt comes up with the interception on the tip ball back to the 45-yard line. Good coverage by Pitt that time. They had the receiver well covered. The ball was thrown right to him, tipped, and there was Robert Bradley, the cornerback, stepping up. Watch the call. Drop back action. Pretty good protection. Spindler picked up by the back there. The fullback came in to block him. There's the pass intended for Johnson, the tight end. Good coverage on the corner. And there's the play by Bradley, 16, picking it off. Marcus Washington was the man who tipped the ball, and Pitt is in business in excellent field position, trailing Temple by a score of 3 0. It's wide open spaces leading straight to the sun. Your spirit is soaring with you. The great American road belongs. Rubble, 
Ruffles have ranches. I oh, trust you. Ranch? Ruffles have ranch? You can't say it, can you? You all right? Ruffles have ranch ridges. Or ranch ruffles really have ridges. Ranch ruffles really have ridges. Someday maybe they'll have a rope for ridges. Thank you, boss. Rutabaga. Try new ranch flavored ruffles potato chips. The taste will get you talking. Rock candy ruffles. That's what I would like. Rock candy ruffles have ridges. All Nippon Airways, Japan's favorite airline, offers luxurious service across the Pacific to 12 destinations. ANA, Japan's best to the world. We're looking at the, the sideline as the offensive line coach is talking with the uh, offensive line of Temple. There you see Ray Haynes, the senior out of Philadelphia. He's the key guy. They put him on the right side today to block Mark Spindler. It's Dave Borbley, who is the Offensive line coach now for Temple. Temple's defense back on the field after the interception by Robert Bradley and Kervin Richards is back into the ball game. He carries up over the 40-yard line to the 39 on the handoff from Van Pelt. And coming in to make the stop is Manny Carlos, left inside linebacker. They describe uh, Kervin Richards as a back that can go all the way anytime, and that's true. And the ability to run inside and outside. Incredible. And he gets through the hole. He makes things happen in the most unusual situation. Scouting report says Kervin Richards is a man with excellent vision. He's got it again. Big opening down to the 35-yard line of Temple. And he's brought down there by Lorenzo Square. His name will call quite frequently. He's very close to a first down. It will be a gain of six. But good job on the left side by Matus, the left tackle, and gets the left guard. Two experienced seniors. One at 6'5", 285 Matus, and gets it 6'3", 280. Excellent players. 62 and 72. Open up a big hole. Gave Richards a chance to bounce it off tackle. Well, and Pittsburgh has offensively come up with some great linemen down through the years, haven't they? The guys like Jimbo Covert, Russ Grimm, Bill Fralick. He's going to be that far away from a first down. So give him five and a half, and we'll show Pittsburgh now as Lorenzo Square looks at it, sees how close it is, sees the job that his defense is called upon to do. They're on the field a little quicker than they thought because of the 18th turnover this season by the Temple offense. A pass interception by Robert Bradley. Hit looking at third and one, trailing Temple 3-0. 0 for 2 on third down that's far today. There's the handoff to Richards. Richards gets hit at the line of scrimmage, but he got enough forward progress to get it. Came with a late blitz inside the guards that time. Didn't work. Didn't get to the ball carrier, stumbled Richards enough, but he fell forward for the look. Watch him blitz here. Watch 51 square coming late. See him coming through the, the guard center gap right there. Richards adjust, breaks the thing off tackle. He's hit there by Kenyatta Rush, but he falls forward, gets the first down, and Pitt is starting to move the football. Greg Taylor in on the stop for Temple. First and 10 now for the Pitt Panthers. Working on the left hash, and they're in Temple territory at the 35. Adjustment gives it to Richards. Richards, not much room. Angeli is there along with Rush. Angeli, Greg Angeli, the junior out of Ardmore, Pennsylvania. He was a former nose guard, number 98. He's played extremely well all year. 15 solo tackles for him. Pittsburgh running with two tight ends and a wide set, one flanker, running the football from tackle to tackle. Very interesting set for him early in this ballgame, trying to get their running game going, two tight ends and a flanker. Second down and nine at the 33 of Temple. Hit with the football. Play action. Here's Van Pelt looking for Tootin over the middle. No! Does he have it? Yes! Touchdown! 33 yards. Gary Mobley on the coverage, but Tootin had a step on him all the way. Great play fake by the quarterback. Great play fake by Van Pelt. Watch this as we watch from the end zone. Watch the play fake here. Tucks that ball in the middle. Look at those linebackers go for the fake. Meanwhile, Tootin is beating the quarterback, Mobley, on the post right in the middle. Look at that catch. Look at that pass. Boy, it was close whether or not he got to the ground first. But he had possession of the football. An excellent catch by Tootin. All right, Hetzler on the hold. The kick by Frey 
Frazier is up, and it is good. Eddie Frazier, who booted that 42-yarder to tie West Virginia a week ago, puts the punctuation mark on top of the 33-yard touchdown pass from Alex Van Pelt to Henry Tooten. We'll see it from ground level. Here's ground level. Here's number seven. He's running him just a little turn to the inside, and he just beats him on the post right down the middle. Let's see the catch here. Boy, one-handed catch and catch. You can't do it close. any better. Henry Tootin, the senior out of Camden, New Jersey, right across the river here. Tremendous moves in the open field, and he showed one right then. Henry Tootin has caught his fourth touchdown pass of the season. As you look at the play drive of five plays after the interception, picked off there by Robert Bradley near midfield, and it's an interception that leads to a touchdown here for Pitt. Next Saturday, we'll see the Pitt Panthers once again in their own home at Pitt Stadium against the midshipmen from Navy as they'll be forced to handle the wishbone courtesy of Alton Grizzard. Alton Grizzard, the Navy quarterback. Elliot Uzelak, the coach, start to come along. Big win last week for Navy over North Carolina. 12-7. to 7. We'll be on on most of these stations at high noon. So, Temple trying to keep things cranked here for the home fans. Their offense hasn't played that badly, except for the turnover near midfield. And they're just trying to shake that off and get themselves back into the contest. Here is Jeff Van Horn gets set to kick. Back deep, Leslie Shepard. Number four at the top of your screen. At the bottom, that's Kevin McCoy. We'll be set for the kickoff here on this beautiful day in Philadelphia. McCoy at the 15. McCoy jumps over people and gets out. A nice 16-yard return, 14-yard return to the 29-yard line. Brought down by Prentice Wright, among other people. Also, Bobby uh, Boykin is in on the stop as well. Now you've got it. Watch number five, Lewis Riddick, the free safety on the kickoff team. This is where he made his name last year playing here. He takes it seriously. He's the backup guy. He's going one on one. <laughs> Don't try to block me, he said. Riddick's been around in this team. He's played fullback. He's played two different positions in the defensive secondary, and he's playing special team. Here's Lay on first down. Complete to Chambers in the flats. And Chambers gets some running room out to the 39 yard line. Excellent pass by Victor Lay. Little stop pattern. Hits his wide receiver, puts the ball right there among the defenders. Big, big catch. By number nine, Chambers. Watch this. Good delivery. Lots of authority on the ball. Good move here by Chambers to get upfield, pick up some extra yards. And this is what they need. Second down now and three. Seven-yard gain. Alonzo Hampton on the tackle. Pitt still has their first defensive unit in there. Lay, hand off to Ventress Stevenson. Picks his way back to about the 40-yard line. Very close to the first down marker. Very close to it. Craig Gobb, the middle linebacker, in on the tackle, and it looks like he's got the first down. Preliminary indication says they'll move the chain. Now the official wants to bring the chains out. Nope, it's going to be first down. John Safi said, I've seen it up. They got it. Another first down here for Temple. They rolled up a few here in their first three offensive series. Good change up in their routine. Throwing the ball, ball on the early downs, possession type passes, running Ventress Stevenson inside. Play fake to Stevenson now. Lay is rolling, gets it out into the flat, and it is complete. Complete out there to a back at the 50 yard line, and it's going to be to Roman Hale, the fullback, who makes the catch a 12 yard gain and another first down. And this is a little bootleg or counter action. They slip the fullback. Watch the fullback, 46. He's going to run into the flat. Little fake to the tailback, comes out of that play fake. 46 is free because 58 Bray, who has to cover him out of the backfield, was a little late getting there. You know, one thing that is curious is the way that things are working as you look at Roman Hale. Temple is having great success with a short passing game. Because they're throwing on the early downs and getting him when it's usually a run situation. If you're late, the Ventress Stevenson falls straight ahead over the 35, over the 45 yard line, down to the 43. Carnell Smith on the tackle. And that combination, breaking up the rhythm, the routine is good for your offensive line, and it gives them a chance. If you're going to throw on first down many times, the defense is thinking run. They're geared for that. It gives them a better chance to protect. Look at Ventress Stevenson, outstanding running back. Has had a great year under tough difficulties coming into this ball game, averaging 4.8 yards per carry. The senior out of Camden, Delaware. Rich Drayton is in. Kevin McCoy, Leslie Shepard, three wide receivers after the four-yard gain, second and six. Lay to the 
flats complete to Maurice Johnson, the tight end at the 35-yard line of Pitt. It's good for a first down. Driving the deep receivers, Brayton McCoy running deep, clearing the cornerbacks out, sliding the, the, the tight end, the left side of your screen again, number 85 Johnson, quickly into the flat, forcing McDonald, the linebacker, to try to get out there to cover him. Victor Lay is throwing the ball very well thus far. Big catch by Johnson. We know he can catch the ball. Good speed. That's his third catch this afternoon. He come in all year with only eight catches through five ball games. Jerry Burns' plan at the beginning of the season was to get in the ball four or five times a game this afternoon. It's worth it. Three wide receivers to the wide side of the field now. And Johnson in motion as well. Here's Lay. Complete into the corner to McCoy. McCoy's brought back. His forward motion, though, will be marked down to the 30-yard line. A gain of five. Robert Bradley made the stop for Pitt. That, that is a dangerous pass. He's thrown to the wide side of the field. He gets the ball there, but just in time. Watch this. As he delivers the ball, watch Bradley come up on this receiver. If that ball's a little bit inside or late, he's going to pick it off. you got to watch him. Quarter is over, and it's been a good one for Temple, with the exception of that first quarter interception. It's Pitt leading by a score of 7-3 to three after one. We now pause for a word from your local station. Look at Lumina. An all-new 1990 midsize Chevrolet at your super Chevy dealers. Look at Lumina. Chevy Lumina with more standard power than Taurus. Look at Lumina. With more room than Taurus, Dynasty, or Accord. Look at Lumina. Six passengers ride in comfort. Look at Lumina. With 750 cash back, it's priced hundreds less than the competition. Look at Lumina. Look at the 1990 Lumina now at your super Chevy dealers. As our company expanded, we found ourselves stuck with a lot of incompatible equipment. And the more we grew, the more caught up we got. Now we're immersed in wires, PCs, mainframes. I feel like we're being trapped by our own technology. Bell Atlantic's intelligent network can provide connectivity for virtually all of your users right over the phone lines. But we can't help you out unless you call 1-800-444-8838. Good news! Uh, he said he's just about made a deal with the United States. Have found perfect drink for Soviet people and is better than vodka. He wants America to send us Stroh's Light. We'll have flavor. It's the only fire brewed light beer. We'll come in bottles. In bottles. We'll come in cans. And in cans. We'll have my picture on it. With his picture on the label. At least that's what I think. Uh, that's what he thinks. It's not the same as other lights. It's fire brewed Stroh's Light. Bye bye vodka. Hello Stroh's. Have you heard about Shop and Save's Fitness Facts? It's a new shelf tag system designed to increase your nutrition awareness. Concerned about cholesterol? Our color-coded tags alert you to low cholesterol foods, plus high fiber, calcium, and low fat sodium or calorie. Whether you're trying to stay in shape, get back in shape, or you're on a special diet, Fitness Facts will keep you eating right. So get the facts. Fitness Facts at Shop and Save. Temple cheerleaders have something to cheer about. Their team has looked good so far in the first quarter, in despite the fact that they're trailing here by a score of 7-3. to three. Steve Martin here along with Bob Cassiola, Veterans Stadium in Philadelphia. Beautiful afternoon for football. Great American independent football with two Eastern independents having at it. Second down and five coming up for Temple. They're on the pit 30-yard line. Victor Lay, hand off Stevenson. Wide open territory, cuts back. Still on his feet as he's knocked out at the 15 yard line by Dan Crossman. Great job on the left side of the line here. The blocking. This is a little counter play to Ventress Stevenson, 26. He is good. He's consistent. He's a strong inside runner. Look at him bounce this off tackle and then outside. And now he's got the corner. He makes a good move on number five, Riddick, and gets some extra yardage upfield. Jamie Parrish, James Parrish made a nice block to free everything up in the middle. Stevenson with his 15 yard gain is 33 on the day. And Temple is at the pit, 15-yard line, first and 10. Hale and Stevenson in back of Lay. Lay fake, Lay rolls out, fires a pass, incomplete, tipped at the last second by Lewis Riddick. What a play by Riddick. You want to see an athlete. You want to see movement. You watch the safety. 
Lewis Riddick, the junior out of Quakertown, Pennsylvania. Watch him in the middle of the field, right up on the top of the screen, number five. Here's the play fake. They're going to free up the tight end. Excuse me, 83 Drayton in the corner. Watch Riddick's move, and he never touches the receiver. You can't do it any better than that. It'll bring up second down. Great and camera ten. work. Great camera work. There you see Lewis Riddick playing the position they actually recruited him for. Lay gives to Cabrera. Cabrera straight ahead. And the fullback gets to about the 12. It's a pickup of three. Tony Siragusa is the man who stopped it. Very important here. Third down, ball sitting inside the 15-yard line. Third down and eight. They'd like to get a first down. They can't afford to give it up here. They don't want to throw an interception. He's got to be very careful here to keep this drive alive, at least have a shot at going for a field goal. Scott, Scott McNair comes into the ball game now for Roman Hale at fullback. This is where Temple, in this situation, this year has been plagued by mistakes, turnovers. Three wide receivers, Drayton to the top. The slot man is Johnson. McCoy and Shepard to the bottom. Here's Lay to throw. In trouble, scrambling. Gets out of bounds and loses about seven yards in the process to the 20. Better off that time just throwing it out of bounds and keeping the field position. He lost some yardage. He's going to put a little extra pressure on his place kicker here. Here it is. Here's the pressure. They came after him a little bit. They beat the blocks up front. Good pressure in there by 91 Smith as he pushes him right into the sideline. That's Carnell Smith, the senior defensive end. So Tim Hornbacher is there to hold for the kick by Bob Wright. Dick Beck is a long snapper. It's a 38-yard attempt. He is 0 for 2 from this distance. High snap. Here's the kick. It is up. It is no good. Wide to the right, no good. And Temple's drive stops there. Pitt taking over at the 20-yard line. So the Pitt Panthers have held after Temple threatens deep. We've got a timeout. 13.55 left to go. Pittsburgh leading 7-3 in the first half. Who could ask for anything more? <laughs> after if it has a five-speed transmission like Isuzu. Does it have a five-speed transmission? Well, I'm going to check on that. Ask him if it has a bigger payload than Isuzu. Ignore him? Or better mine it. Does it? Not exactly. No! Ask him why it costs hundreds more than Isuzu. No! Right now, you could save big bucks on the pickup during Isuzu's Take It to the Bank sale. You're looking sharp. You're looking good. You've come so far. And we know how to make the most of who you are. Father to son, it's what we've always done. Gillette. The Gillette Atra Plus system and Gillette Foamy Shave Cream together, Gillette. the best a man can get. The best a man can get. First quarter stats, pretty even in times of possession, total yards. Only change there, the turnover by Temple, the interception which turned into a score for Pitt. The only difference really in those stats at the end of one quarter. Pitt's offense takes the field now at their own 20-yard line. Van Pelt gives to Adam Walker. Walker down in Angeli's grasp at the 25-yard line after a gain of about five brings up second and five. You know, Bob Temple drove 50 yards. They had four first downs. They held on to the ball four minutes, but unfortunately, Jerry Burnt, they didn't get any points. Mistake by the quarterback. That time, instead of taking the loss and going out of bounds, he probably put, should have put the ball out of bounds and kept the ball in within reasonable field goal range. It made a difference of seven yards and pulled his field goal kicker out to a 30-yard, 38-yard field goal instead of a 31-yard field goal attempt. He missed. Here's Walker, and he's hit in the backfield. Oh, boy, that is going to be Greg Taylor in with Kenyatta Rush. Adam Walker running very tentatively to the outside. Gave that defense a chance to adjust. 
And watch this as he gets the ball back. Good job up front by Rush, 87, beating the block, Constantotis. But Walker, look at how gingerly he's out there. There's no place for him to cut. Defense doing a good job swarming. Throwing him for a loss. It's third down and seven. Loss of two, third and seven at the pit 23-yard line. Pitt has to pull that double tail inside and set out. They'll have to put three wide receivers into the ball game, which they have done. And Pelt with a play fake. Looking downfield as a man in the open, and that was Baron Jackson. It's incomplete. We've got a penalty flag on the play. Could it's be a, interference on Fred Gunner. It is on Freddie Gunner. As the, as, as the receiver came across, he was with him, but he did one thing, and he was right in front of the official. He puts his left hand on the back of the pit receiver, number 19, Jackson, and he got called for it. So the penalties which aided Temple in their first drive down the field looks like it's going to help Pitt. Good, good play fake again. Holds the linebacker for a minute, and then Van Pelt lets it go, but he gets hit right there. And he hangs in there and delivers the football. The ball was right on the money. There's the hand by number five, Gunter, on the back of Jackson, the receiver, and he gets called for it. Now we've got a big discussion back to the line of scrimmage as the referee. John Soffy goes over and talks to the linesman. I didn't see a second flag go down. No, but he's trying to get the mark from, from the ball. The original line of scrimmage That's should be exactly. the 23. There it is. And they're marking it off 15 yards downfield. That'll pull it out to the, about the 38-yard line. Pass interference on the defense. 15-yard penalty, automatic first down. At the 38-yard line of Pitt. So the Panthers get a break after Temple had apparently made a nice defensive stand. And they've got the ball once more at the 12-37 mark. Pitt continues to stay with two tight ends offensively and a flanker. Now they've got a, a slot on this side. And help. Wide dive to Richards. Richards up over the 40 to about the 43-yard line. A gain of five. Mobley has it. We've got a loose ball. And they blew it dead before Armstrong came out of the pack with it. Armstrong also helped out on the tackle along with Eric Warren. Temple will show you a three-man alignment, but they'll show you a lot of odd fronts. They'll come up with three down linemen and two outside linebackers, bring them up onto the line of scrimmage. They like to get those weak side linebackers like Lorenzo Square into the action and use their speed. Second down, Walker jumps outside. There's no room there. No room there. Lorenzo Square is in on the stop with Santos Stevens of Temple. Watch this defensive line. Watch this line play. Offensively and defensively. Top of your screen. Walker's getting the ball deep. He's trying to cut, looking for a hole. Nothing there. The key was Rush. 89. Shut off the inside. Forced him to bounce outside. By that time, Lorenzo Square, who they free up, as you mentioned, to get to the football, was there to make the hit. Third down and four at the 43-yard line. No gain on the play. Turner, the lone setback for Van Pelt. Temple showing blitz. They bring six. Right past the Turner at the 40. Out to midfield. And he's brought down at the 41-yard line by Fred Gunter. Beautiful job by the quarterback, Van Pelt. That time, Temple showed the blitz too soon. He read it, and he went to his outlet. He freed his fullback up. Watch this. Here they come. They showed it much too soon. The fullback, 35, re excuse me, Turner, releases to the outside. The tailback, the single back, it just drops it off to him. The linebackers are lost inside, forcing the cornerback, Gunter, five, to come up to make the hit. First down, yardage of 15 yards on the play. It's at the 42 of Temple now. Hit with the football. They go back to that double tight end set. And off Richards. Richards pecking his way behind the block of his center, Sistelli, over the 40-yard line to the 38. Santos Stevens on the stop for Temple. Up front, Temple doing a good job initially on the line of scrimmage. They're shutting off the lanes, but that time when you got a back like Richards, he finds it. He broke it back to the left side. What quickness. That's the difference. Turns a maybe a no-gain play into a four-yard gain, but they're hanging in there. They're playing tough on defense, and Pitt is working for every yard. Second down and six. Temple's done a decent job forcing third and long today. And help to throw. Looking up top as a man open. That's Williams. It is complete for a touchdown. Thirty-eight yards downfield. Van Pelt, his second touchdown pass. 
catch of the day. This one to Reggie Williams. Steve, you can't put the ball in a better place. It was absolutely a perfectly thrown pass. Excellent pattern by Reggie Williams, the senior, out of Beaver Falls, Pennsylvania, number two. But the ball was thrown perfectly, and Mobley, the cornerback, looked up far too late for the football. He never found the football in time. Beautifully executed play. Hit getting set to kick the extra point, and Frazier getting set to do it. Reggie Williams went step for step with Gary Tost Mobley. Tost got fried that year. Here's the kick by Frazier. It is going to be good. And Pitt moves out in front here with a pair of touchdowns. This time at the 10-27 mark here in the second quarter. Here's another look at that 38-yard pass by Van Pelt. Left of your screen, you're going to see uh, the wide receiver, Williams, running. He just running a fly pattern up the sideline. There's the football, never looking back. By the time Mobley tried to find the ball, it was lost. Excellent concentration on the part of Williams. We pause now for a word from your local stations. A Pittsburgh National Home Equity Credit Line can turn your house into a bigger one with a low 9.75% introductory rate. Turn it into a new car and drive away with some big tax savings. Or turn it into almost anything else. Because you pay no closing costs, you'll save hundreds of dollars right away. So visit or call and turn this extraordinary loan application into just about anything at Pittsburgh National. I know that you are all mad at me. I know this. You send me out to America with money. You want me to bring back the Stroh's Light because it's fire brewed. It's one of a kind, I know. But uh, I'm, uh, uh, I'm in New York. I see this gray suit, and I spent the money. It looks good on me. It's not the same as other lights. It's fire brewed Stroh's Light. Do you want to toss me out of office? Go ahead. I mean, you know, over one suit. And another thing I want to most of the time, after a manufacturer puts the finishing touches on a suit or sport coat, he ships it to a wholesaler who marks it up. He, in turn, ships it to a retailer who also marks it up. But there is a manufacturer who ships his garments directly to his own stores, which is why his suits and sport coats carry a different mark. Richmond Brothers, a good suit at a good price. Pitt moves in front of Temple 14 to 3 on this play as Alex Van Pelt makes his second touchdown pass of the day. Great form here. Watch this delivery. Gets the ball up. Puts the ball up to Williams. Watch Williams looking back for the ball. Mobley never finding the ball. Great catch. Great concentration. But Mobley's got to have help. Somebody's got to give him a call out there to look for that football. Nobody probably did. He got beat deep and that's the way they've scored. Two great catches by two outstanding receivers. Tootin and Williams. And pits ahead 14-3. Williams' eighth catch of the year and his first touchdown catch of the year. All right, Shepard picks the ball up at the three. Shepard, nice cut. Got himself a nice return and goes out of bounds at the 38-yard line. 37-yard return by Leslie Shepard of Temple, and that's where Temple's going to set up shop here first and 10. In on the stop, Eric Holdsworth. Tackle for Pitt as you look at Leslie Shepard, one of the fine outside skilled people recruited at Temple in his sophomore season. Great All American. And he's got the speed and showed it there with a nice little move to the 25 yard line to get himself out to the 37. And a new quarterback into the ball game now for Temple is Anthony Richardson. Richardson straight ahead at the 40 yard line. Gives ahead to Ventress Stevenson, running back. Stevenson picks up a little bit of running room. Now it's going to be Efrain Cabrera. Cabrera in on the tackle, or rather in on the carry. He goes two yards, brings up second and eight. Anthony Richardson came in last week and uh, played against Houston. There's his stats right there. Had a shoulder injury in this spring practice, but they like this kid. 6'3", 195 pounds out of Freehold, New Jersey. Second down and seven. And off to the first man is Cabrera. And Cabrera, the freshman. Picks up the first down. Lewis Riddick has to make the saving tackle at the pit 44-yard line, a gain of 15. Watch number 92. Hamilton, the defensive end, gets a little too deep into the backfield, couldn't close the hole, gave the fullback a chance to get up inside, but a good job of blocking on the right side by Haynes. There's that friend, Cabrera. 
the freshman out of Keyport, New Jersey. Had a big day last week against Houston in a losing cause, but he showed some signs. First and ten, Richardson on the keep. Option play gets tackled there by Curtis Bray. There's the reason that they've got Richardson in the game. They're coming with a new look. Not drop back, not pass solely. Little option action, dive. Possibility of him keeping the ball or pitching it on the corner to his tailback. That's a good point because it's not necessarily an indictment of Victor Lay, who has played fairly well here in the early going. Six for ten at the end of the first quarter. I think Jerry Burns trying to stay in his ball game, change up a little bit, and hopefully somebody like Richardson give a little more to his offense. Second down and eight at the pit 42. Richardson. Options on the corner to his tight end. Johnson and loses the handle of the ball, and it is picked up by Pitt. And it's going to be taken by Tom Sims, the senior out of Detroit. And that's what happens when you put a play in and have somebody a little bit different catching the football here. Watch this play. The tight end comes across. There's the fake to the fullback. The tight end is in motion here, and he's trying to handle the football. He doesn't do that as often as a tailback. Consequently, he coughs it up. And another turnover for Temple. Second turnover of the day. The first one was an interception that resulted eventually in a pit drive for a touchdown. This one gives Pitt offense the position at their own 36. As you see Tom Sims on the sideline now, Jerry Burnt. What he feared that has happened in most of the games that the Temple has played this season, with the exception of the Western Michigan game early on, turnovers early at uh, taking them out of the game plan. Alex Van Pelt in command the two wide receivers to the right. He's looking in their direction. Wants a man in the flats, has his man out there. That's going to be Lewis, and Lewis gets very little yardage. The fullback, a flag is thrown on the play, and the tackle is going to be made by Greg Angeli. Angeli is outstanding. He's made the plays inside, upfield, and that time covering the back and the flat. Here's the call. Holding on the offense. That time. Hold on the offense. That time Pitt came up, just took the ball over on a turnover, came up, broke their formation up, tried to send three back, three receivers deep. Really were looking to get into the flat with their back, didn't work. Good defensive job by Temple, and they've got a penalty. It's going to push him back farther. And we've got a special halftime for you this afternoon in our Great American Independent Football broadcast. Our Rolling Rock Review looks at last week in Great American Independent Football. Great American champions with a profile. We'll have the scores from around the country. Our student athlete of the week. We'll learn a little bit more about Rich Drayton, and we'll also have a special guest here at halftime. He's probably Temple's most famous alum. Bill Cosby is expected to be here at halftime. So uh, we're going to have some fun here. It's homecoming here at Vet Stadium for the Temple Owls. And so far, with the exception of these turnovers and the opportunities that they have presented thus far in Pitt, their hometown team has performed fairly well. They felt that their best performance this season was against Virginia Tech. They lost that game, a 23-0 shutout. Square blitzes. Oh. And they read it, and Adam Walker was out with big running room where the linebacker used to be, out to the 42-yard line. John Armstrong is in on the stop. It's a 16-yard game. What a great adjustment. What a great adjustment on the left side. Caliguire, number 64, making the block here to pick up on this blitz. The blitz is going to come right over in the center's area right there. Watch the adjustment here. Number 64 makes the hit, traps him outside in 29. Walker running up inside behind his blockers. Gets a little block downfield from Toot. Enough to get him upfield and make it a second down now. And four. At the 42, pitch to Walker. Walker gets outside again, has the first down at midfield and into Temple territory at the 44-yard line. Blocking. That is going to be a 14-yard gain. Keita Crespina. Starting to block down the tackle. Uh, Lavorio and Dixon, the guard, blocking down and kicking out the defensive end, Angeli, that time, and giving Walker a chance to cut it up inside. And the prominence of Adam Walker on this drive lends us to believe that uh, Kervin Richards may be a little ginger as far as that arm is concerned, but that leg is concerned. Van Pelt hands off now. Richards is back in there. And Richards shows that running ability out over the 40-yard line down to the 38. Angeli in on the stop again for Temple. Mixing up the tailback, substituting the receivers again. It's one-on-one. -on -one. Every play now, they're, all, they're substituting Walker and Richards at the tailback position. Take Baron Jackson out of there as well. Pittsburgh rolling up the yards now offensively. 89. 59 for Temple represents uh, quite a bit of what Pitt is 
averaging as far as defensive game. Here comes a reverse. Tootin on the corner. Penn Pelt through a block. Tootin down to about the 35-yard line. All that running and only three yards gained. Santos Stevens in on the stop. Stevens hung around, made the play, but the play really was made by 29, the free safety number, Armstrong. He watched 29 in the middle of the field. He sees the play, and he comes back to the right side, gets up in there first to make Tootin check, and now he gives a chance for Stevens to make the hit. A gain of three leaves Pitt a yard short, third down and one. Pittsburgh leading Temple by a score of 14 to three. 6-0-1 left to go in the first half here at Vet Stadium. Williams in motion. Kervin Richards to the 30. He's got the first down. Dudley's in on the stop. Also there with a tackle, Santos Stevens for Temple, but it's first down yardage for Kervin Richards of four yards. First and 10, Pittsburgh at the Temple 30. Richards just a sophomore. His biggest fear last year, Bob, don't redshirt me. Get me in there. Let me see some action. And that's what happened. Comes to from Trinidad, original. Pitt trying to capitalize on Temple's second turnover of the game. Richard tries to bounce outside, and Santos Stevens says none of that. Stevens playing with a lot of enthusiasm today. He's making hits on all sides of the field, up field in the flats. That time he came up just before Richards had a chance to cut it outside. There he is. Capitol Heights, Maryland, 6'4", 220, only a sophomore. Very active. 14 tackles coming into this contest this afternoon. Eight solo, and he did a nice solo job that time. Brings up second and 10 now for Pitt. Baron Jackson split to the bottom of your screen. Draw play. Here's Richard. Flag is thrown. He's tackled at the original line of scrimmage, the 30. Let's see what the flag brings us. Manny Carlos and Santos Stevens in on the tackle for Temple. Holding on the offense. Big call there. Good job defensively. Carlos and Square and a whole bunch of people reading the draw coming up to make the hit. And let's see if we can pick up here. Here it is. Little draw action to the tailback as he tries to break it outside. There's 51. Square, Carlos making a hit also. So again, a penalty pushes Pitt back. Defensively, Temple has done a good job against the run. As you look at the penalties, I'm sure that Mike Godfrey's not going to be happy about it. He's going to talk about that at halftime. Five penalties, 47 yards. But they've been able to come off of these penalties with a bomb, and this may be a situation where we'll see it. Second down and 20. Well, they've got the wide receivers in. Now they take Williams and Baron Jackson out. They've got Henry Tootin in as they look at second and 20 from the 40-yard line. Orlando Truitt is wide to the top. Henry Tootin wide to the bottom. Tight end is stationed over on the right. Play action for Van Pelt. Constantinos with a rush. Here's the throw. Incomplete intended for Tootin, but did Constantino? Boy, he unloaded on Alex Van Pelt. He's an intense player. He came into this game with two sacks already. He's a junior at 6'4", 265. And watch 87 as he made the play from Comac, New York. And there's Henry Tootin now. Let's take a look at Henry Tootin on the wide side, working against Freddie Gunner, number five, the cornerback. He's getting hit. Lots of people are picking up on him. That's the uh, that's the free safety, number seven, coming over. Gary, the other cornerback, Gary Mobley, coming up to assist. But they're looking for Tootin on the pass now. Third down and 20. Hit up 14 to three in Temple territory. Van Pelt. Green to Walker. Walker tackled by Lorenzo Square at the 41. Great play by Lorenzo Square. Great play because that's a linebacker in the open field trying to hit a tailback. That's the situation you would like, but when it's Lorenzo Square, it's a different situation. Watch 51. He drops, he picks up here, he's keying on his back, he sees him coming over here, and then from there it's one-on-one -on -one in the open field, but at 6'2", 230, Lorenzo Square makes the hit. They call him a great player, he surely is. Consistent throughout his career here, the senior from Trenton, New Jersey. Brian Greenfield in the punt. Boy and Hornbaker are back to receive deep for Temple. Line of scrimmage to the 41 of Temple. Greenfield hangs one. 
Out of bounds into the end zone for a touchback. And they'll bring it out to the 20-yard line. A 41-yard punt, no return on the play. The clock stops with 326 left in the first half. Important series for Temple. The defense held them. They didn't get any more points before the half, 14 to 3. I think the defense has done an excellent job today against the run. And they got to be happy with themselves. Pittsburgh up 14 to 3. Temple coming back with the ball. It's a feeling of power, of substance and style. You know that you're on your way. The great American road belongs to Buick. Oh, the moment has come to go your own way. The road, your Buick and you. Oh, the great American road belongs. Nothing's too good for my baby. Nothing. So my baby gets very special treatment. There's a gasoline so special, it even exceeds BMW's detergency standard. Fill it up. Ultra. Sunoco Ultra 94. Clean power from the highest octane under the sun. Nothing else can match it. Nothing. There's a special breed of people who do battle day after day. Their arena, the business world. Their territory, the road. They are the road warriors. Ray? Ray Cave! On the road again, huh? Three cities this week. Hey, Mary Hansen, sales director for Land. Hi! And Say, Howard Johnson is the place the road warrior chooses when he gets ready for the road. Again and again. Howard Johnson, home of the road warriors. There is Matt Baker, the man that uh, Temple had expected to start at quarterback, suffered a severely separated shoulder in the Syracuse game. And Victor Lay has been in there ever since with a brief rest from Anthony Richardson. And Ventres Stevenson cuts his way up to the 35-yard line. A nice gain of 15 yards on first and 10. And a great job of blocking on the right side by Ray Haynes, the senior offensive tackle, giving Ventra Stevenson a chance. Watch this wide look at you see. There's the little delay, hands it back as he breaks off the right side. Good blocking up front, good blocking downfield by his fullback Hale on the linebacker. Gets Temple in good field position. They got a shot here with three minutes to go in the half. Prentice right, Marcus Washington have to make the stop. First and 10 at the 35. Johnson in motion. Here's Lay. Short drop. Pass to the flats. Complete to McCoy. McCoy gets up over the first down marker to the 48-yard line. Tackled by Lewis Riddick and a gain of 13 yards. Good protection. Early down. Short passing game. Hard to put pressure. Here's Mark Spindler trying to do it. There he's working against Haynes, who's doing a good job of blocking. Picked up then by the center, Dick Beck. So they're double teaming Spindler up front. That's what he commands, that kind of respect. First and 10. Near midfield. 235 left in the half. Lay short pass to Johnson. His fourth catch of the day. Out of bounds at the 46 yard line. Plenish Wright made sure he stayed out of bounds. It's a gain of six. It'll be second down and about four. But you know, the ultimate compliment that Pitt has given Temple this afternoon is that they have not brought that second unit defensively, or the 1A unit, as Bob Belisante likes to refer to it to. Not that I have seen thus far this afternoon. They've kept their first unit in defensively all the way, and they've been challenged. Second down for Temple at the Pitt 46. Trailing 14-3. Give to Stevenson. Stevenson rides Prentice right for a first down down to the 40 of Pittsburgh. Another first down. Good play by Prentice Wright. If he doesn't make the hit, Stevenson's off for another 10 yards. Prentice Wright coming off the block from his uh, linebacker position. They go away from Spindler. They're running counter action to the left side, away from Mark Spindler at the defensive left tackle position. Ray Haynes makes a nice block. I'll be first and 10 at the pit 40. Three wide receivers into the ballgame now for Temple. Steps up in the pocket. Throw to Drayton incomplete. He was open early. He was open early. The ball was just a hair late for him. And Lay had to dump it off quickly. He had the pocket and stepped up in there nicely, but he had some pressures. We'll see here. Here we go as he drops back. WTAE TV, Pittsburgh. Who's picked up again by the fullback after he comes off the block. 
by 75, 71 Haynes. Just a little bit too soon. The pass was there. Drayton and McCoy come to the sideline. Second down and 10 now. Chambers is in the ballgame at split end. And off goes on a draw to Stevenson. Stevenson dances around Crossman, but he won't dance away from Mark Spindler and gets brought down at the 38-yard line. They're going to use the clock now. They've got to be conscious of the, of the clock. 150 left to go. First half of play. Temple trying to tack some points on the board. They trail here 14 to 3, and Jerry Burnt looking things over. Both teams have full complement of timeouts remaining. Temple has yet to exercise any of theirs. They have three. Clock moving, 128 left. Third down and eight. receivers developed their patterns he ran out of that pocket but he looked and found his receiver McCoy coming over the middle watch this good protection up front good blocking up front now he decides to come out as he does he finds the man open number four coming across the middle that time Shepard excuse me making the catch keeping the drive alive first and ten at the 17 clock shows a minute and one left lay pumps now in the grass throws it away out of bounds wise choice as Carnell Smith was all over it. And you know when he came off the last time and he took, remember when he ran out of bounds and they pushed themselves too far back for the field goal, somebody said that to him. That time he wasn't going to take the sack. He put it out of bounds. Watch, there he is. It is important, I think. I think you'll agree, Bob, that Temple come away with points here in any fashion. Victor Lay has done a good job today. The senior out of Aliquippa, Pennsylvania, heavily recruited coming out of that western Pennsylvania town. Came in here. Everybody said he's got a gun for an arm, but he never gained enough experience, and he was thrown into battle early with an injury to Matt Baker, and every game, every play is a learning experience for him. Temple trailing 14-3, 55 seconds left in the half. Lay steps up, fires over the middle, intercepted. Taken by Bradley, his second pickoff of the day. Bradley gets a block from Hampton on the corner, could be on his way at the 45, and he's knocked out of bounds at the 48-yard line of pick. Dick Beck, the center, has to come back and make the saving tackle after a 44-yard return by Robert Bradley on his second pass interception of the afternoon. When you get down deep and the coverage gets tighter, it's tough to put the ball in the middle. That's where your interceptions come from. A flag is down at the 42-yard line. There are two fouls, a clip by Pitt on the run back. We have a dead ball foul. Personal foul against Temple. The ball will wind up in the same spot right here. So we'll go first and 10 from here. All right. That's a pretty good explanation. Yep. The clipping penalty would have taken him back to the 27, but the personal foul brings him back to the 42. And let's look at the interception again. As he drops back, he sets up. He looks to his left right away as he puts the ball in the corner. Beautiful job by the cornerback standing ste stepping right up in front of it Bradley number 16 He just timed it perfectly never saw him and there it is It's Pitt leading 14 to 3 with 40 seconds remaining in the first half of play Stay with us. We've got more coming up when Pitt gets the ball. I Just did something incredible five minutes ago. I had gray hair, but now I don't and this is what did it. New Option Instant from Clairol. The advanced way to get rid of the gray. New Option Instant for men is different. There's no messy mixing. It's so easy. Just press, apply, and only five minutes later, your natural looking color's back. Hair even feels thicker. So why look like this? When you can look like this. New Option Instant from Clairol. The advanced way to get rid of the gray. Give us a couple of rolling rocks, please. Repeat after me. We tender this premium beer. We tender this premium beer for your enjoyment. For your enjoyment. As a tribute to your good taste. As a tribute to your good taste. It comes from the mountain springs. It comes from the mountain springs. To you. To you. 33. 33? I now pronounce you man and beer. Rolling Rock. Same as it ever was. 
40 seconds remaining in the second quarter of play. Pittsburgh has just gotten the ball back. Now what do the Panthers do with the remaining 40 seconds in a 11-point lead? Well, I think you got to go back. Let's talk about Temple for a second. They moved the ball on the ground again. Turnovers have haunted them and taken away a couple of scores for him. Right in this situation, it could be that he's going to put the ball up with 40 seconds to go and try and get a score, at least get field position to get a score before the half ends. Three wide receivers in the ballgame for Van Pelt, and they go to the draw inside Adam Walker. And Walker. Now he's going to go fast. Watch it here. He's going to go without a huddle. Derek Lewis was the ball carrier, the fullback. Manny Carlos is in on the stop. No huddle for Pitt. They will not use their timeouts. 32 seconds left. Mike Godfrey has called a timeout because he wants to get this thing settled. He wants to get everybody settled down. Mike Godfrey has Van Pelt over at the sideline. What he's doing is he's putting Van Pelt on the phone with uh, Paul Hackett, who's up here in the press box, and he's talking to him directly. Hackett, of course, uh, an excellent quarterback coach. Did the job at San Francisco for Joe Montana. Also at Cleveland for Brian Seid. He said in talking about Alex Van Pelt, he said his biggest talent is he's a natural passer, and he showed that today. Great form. He's got a great rhythm when he throws the ball and natural footwork. Uh, he says from spring practice, he took a quantum light leap when he took over this team and started this season. He said he pays attention to little things. He's intense. He's intelligent, and he's very impressive. Been impressive with two touchdown passes thus far. He's taken advantage of every opportunity presented. The two scores that Pitt has thus far this afternoon are a direct result of turnovers. One a pass interception and the other a fumble. Next week we'll see the Pitt Panthers again but this time in their home blue and gold at Pitt Stadium against the midshipmen of Navy. And the midshipmen are playing Air Force this afternoon. We'll have that game on most of these stations at high noon from Pitt Stadium. So don't miss it. Out and Grizzard and the wishbone attack picking up a win at North Carolina last week. All right, play coming back in. It'll be second down after the draw play and nine at the 44 yard line. 32 seconds remaining. Pitt has two timeouts remaining here in the first half. Three wide receivers into the formation. Two to the top, one to the bottom. Upstairs for Tootin. Makes a nice catch at the 20 yard line. What a play by Tootin Armstrong with the tackle made simultaneously as the ball got there. Going without a huddle. That time Armstrong, the free safety, made a very late break on the football. The ball was there. He was late getting to it. Excellent concentration by Henry Tootin. 36 yard pass completion to Henry Tootin, and now Pitt wants time once more. So they use their second timeout. That time, Tootin came from the top of the screen, broken over, broke over the middle. We'll see it here from the end zone. Drop back action, good protection. We'll watch it as we pick up from the left side here. And there's the delivery. The ball's right in the middle. And watch how late. There's Tootin right there. A 29 comes very late from his free safety position to be on that ball. He had a chance to make a play. Watch Tootin here isolated as he comes down, makes a little fake to the outside, gets behind the under coverage, and now just comes to the middle of the field, and that's where the safety man's got to be. Both of them, they split the two safeties. They caught him in five under, two deep. They split the two safeties in the middle. Tootin already has a touchdown catch thus far this afternoon. He's got, uh, I believe, three catches on the day. That one a 36-yarder. He had seven a week ago against West Virginia for 142 and a touchdown. So he's already on his way to a fine first half. Pitt is leading 14-3 over Temple. 25 seconds remaining in the first half. The Temple defense has done a good job thus far this afternoon. They've held when they've had to. They've had some problems in the pass coverage, as Bob has noted. But they've slowed down the pit running game. But they haven't been able to get all that good a handle on Mr. Van Pelt, who has two touchdown passes. 25 seconds. First and 10 at the 20-yard line of Temple. Saw the timeout order. Reggie Williams is going to the top. Henry Tootin in the slot to that side. Baron Jackson to the bottom. Van Pelt to throw. Van Pelt looking. He wants Walker out of the backfield incomplete. Good job by the secondary. The adjustment by Temple. That time they, they split two receivers to the top, to the wide side of the field. Jackson to the bottom. And they brought the back out of the backfield. Walker. And as he comes out of the backfield, they switched it, picked up. Good job by Mobley, number seven. 
Look at that thing coming right at you. Excellent job. Number seven, Mobley, made the adjustment on the back coming out of the backfield. He's up second down. It stops the clock with 19 seconds left. Hit with one more timeout. Split twins to the top. Baron Jackson again to the bottom. Van Pelt rolling, looking for a screen. Has it complete to Turner at the 25. Turner at the 15, brought down at the 13-yard line. That stops the clock with seven seconds left. Fred Gunter, now the clock is still rolling. Now they stop it. They call a timeout their last timeout. With five seconds left, the timeout called after Gunter's tackle. Well executed. Watch this. They let those four down linemen in. Watch him get in right away as they set up the screen. He dumps the ball up here for number 35, Turner. And then Turner trying to break it back into the middle. Good job keeping him inside where they've got pursuit. And downing him on the 13-yard line. They're going to force Pitt here probably with the score 14 to 3. Five seconds left on the clock. Got to make a choice here to go for the I field know, goal. I stand in line if they do go for the field goal, it'll be a kick of about 30 yards for Ed Frazier, and it'll be on the right hash mark. As you look at Temple gathered around Jerry Burnt and the defensive coordinator, Ron Chismar, for Temple University. He's the man taking charge in the huddle this time, telling his team what to expect. We do not see Frazier yet over in the pit huddle. If we look to the far sideline, there is Frazier right there, along with Jeff Van Horn. My Pitt's got a lot of kickers. <laughs> Scott Kaplan is also. That's right. We saw all of them in the course of the last couple of seasons. But Frazier's been the man of the moment, I guess, especially since his uh, game tying field goal against West Virginia. It's Mike Gottfried now. Talks on the phones, likely to Paul Hackett. See Bill Myers, the offensive line coach, next to him. And now Van Pelt is going to talk. And Frazier comes onto the field. So the field goal decision has been made. And this will be a 20 yard kick for Ed Frazier. Frazier, six out of nine, his longest. 42 yards. It'll be a 30 yard boot. From this distance, he is one for three. A 31 yard kick. Ball is down. And the kick is good. So as time runs out on the first half, Ed Frazier is used to seeing those three zeros up on the clock in the end zone, nails a 31-yard field goal to end the first half of play here, 17-3. to But, Bob, you take away the turnovers, and Temple's played themselves a nice ball game. Every turnover turned into a score for him, and that's the, uh, the unfortunate thing for Temple, but they played with real enthusiasm, especially on defense. They moved the ball offensively, and I think going in at halftime, Jerry Burns feeling good about that at part of the effort. They can cut back on the mistakes. They can get back in this ball game. But a great effort so far for Temple coming in a real underdog. And so Pitt goes to the sideline. Mike Gottfried has got to say to his club, they expected to own the line of scrimmage, and that has not been the case thus far this afternoon. The Temple defensive line has done a very nice job. Kenyatta Rush has played strong. Lorenzo Square. And so we're at halftime. Our score is Pitt 17, Temple 3. Stay with us. We'll be right back. <laughs> okay, guys, I'm uh, closing up early tonight. Good night, sweetheart. Well, it's time to go. I hate to leave you, but I really must say good night, sweetheart. Good night, guys. Good night. Same as it ever was. Humongous gas and electric. Hello, this is Bob Davis. Davis. Ah, yes. 24327A. What's your problem? Our gas heater is off. Do you smell gas, 24327A? Well, no, but we're freezing. Well, we'll be there eventually. But do call immediately if you smell gas. Futura Oil Heat, how may we help you? Tired of yes, big Mr. utility Joe. service hang-ups? I'll send your servicemen right over. Discover the warmth of oil heat. The fun is always shining at Wildens. It's where the good life is better. Wildens. Great golf at Wild Dunes, as low as seventy-one fifty per person per day. For details, call one eight hundred eight four five eighty eight eighty. Come on, put some stuff in your life. The fun is always shining. 
The spirit continues. The University of Pittsburgh, our third century of pioneering the future. Welcome back to Veterans Stadium in Philadelphia as Pitt and Temple go at it. Our score here at halftime shows Pittsburgh leading Temple by a score of 17 to 3. Steve Martin here along with Bob Cassiola. A lot of bad, big bad action last week as far as our great American independents were concerned. You look at that Pitt-West Virginia game and what it meant for Eastern football. You're looking at two teams that a lot of people didn't expect to be playing as well as they have been. It, and it speaks for Eastern football. You know, everybody used to talk about one school in the East, and that was Penn State. And they really dominated play. And then along came Boston College and Flutie, and then Syracuse. And this year now, it's, it looks like Pittsburgh has arrived. And we knew they'd arrive because they've got a lot of seasoned players. And the quarterback, of course, Van Pell, has developed for him. But West Virginia, I think, when uh, after their great effort last year in the bowl game, everybody thought maybe they graduated a lot of people, and they did. But they've come back, and they've got one super athlete at quarterback. So Eastern football right now has so many variables and so many interesting football teams that have the, the ability to beat anybody in the country. And you get teams like Rutgers and Army who are making a move as well as far as Eastern football is concerned. So it was a busy week among our great American independents. Let's take a look at some of the highlights of last week's action. Rolling Rock Beer presents the Rolling Rock Review, a look at last week in great American independent football. Last Saturday in Morgantown, the record crowd of Mountaineer faithful were treated to some major excitement early. On the third play of the game, Heisman candidate Major Harris connected on this 59-yard touchdown pass to James Jett. The first of four TD passes on the night. His record-setting performance was capped by this scoring strike. You see it here to Rico Tyler, and it gave the Mountaineers a 31-9 lead. Then freshman sensation Alex Van Pelt came to life, hitting Henry Toot with a nine-yard TD pass to make it 31-21. In the fourth quarter alone, Van Pelt passed for 164 yards. This completion to Tootin on fourth and eight set up Ed Frazier's game-tying field goal. And the Panthers would rally from a 22-point deficit to stage a 31-31 tie with West Virginia. Moving south to Chapel Hill, North Carolina. Defense would be the name of the game as North Carolina's Torin Dorn will intercept an Alton Grizzard pass on Navy's first possession. He'll return it some 54 yards to give the Tar Heels an early 7-0 lead. But the Heels would score no more in Navy's wishbone offense, which generated 350 total yards offensively, kept Carolina off balance, and set up this 48-yard completion to B.J. Mason. And you'll see in two plays, halfback James Bradley would score from 18 yards out, giving the Middies their first win of the season. It's a 12-7 victory over North Carolina. We move to Columbus, Ohio, where Boston College was down 31-7 before reserve quarterback Willie Hicks took over. Scrambling like former BC great and Heisman winner Doug Flutie, Hicks brought the Eagles to within five at 34-29. But on this fourth and one, the Buckeye defense held firm and BC suffered their third defeat by five points or less this season. Mike Mayweather's 97 yards made him the seventh Army rusher to pass the 2,000-yard plateau, and you see the damage that Houston inflicted on Temple. We'll have more from Veterans Stadium in Philadelphia after we pause for a word from your local stations. WTAE TV, the news has always come first. Now it comes a half hour earlier. 
Each weeknight at 5.30, Don Cannon brings you the first look at the day's news. Then at 6, Sally Wigan joins Don Cannon to bring you a complete wrap-up of all the news. And now at 6.30, watch World News Tonight with Peter Jennings as ABC takes you everywhere news is being made. So see it first on WTAE-TV, where the news comes first. Last fall, WTAE-TV and the Pittsburgh Steelers teamed up to bring you Your Personal Best, a campaign to inspire self-esteem and character in our young people. We visited area schools to talk with kids about the challenges they face growing up today. We also aired special messages in which we shared experiences from our own adolescence. This fall, we kick off year number two. So if you'd like one of the Steelers to visit your school, write your personal best at WTAE-TV, 400 Ardmore, Pittsburgh, 15221. I just got a new muffler! Then you go to Mina King! Before you pay too much for a new muffler, remember, it's smart to come to Mina King. Some people call us Gorilla Television, Gonzo Television, Tabloid Television. This show is rampant anarchy. When you peel away the layers of the story, when it comes down to its one-on-one, -on -one, comes down to the heartbeat of the story, that, that's when it gets real good. Guts TV. Weeknights at 7 on WTAE-TV. We're back at Veterans Stadium in Philadelphia. Our score here at halftime in our afternoon of Great American Independent Football. Pittsburgh leading Temple by a score of 17 to 3. And welcome back. And we welcome a man who's probably the most well-known Temple alumni around, Bill Cosby. Bill, you've cheered this team on so far through the first half. We welcome you to our microphones. And I uh, understand you went down and talked to this club before the game. Apparently, whatever you said has worked because they played well despite being down 17 to 3. Well, what I told them is something that I witnessed when I played for Temple and we were 0 for 27. <laughs> and I just said to the guys, you know, when you tackle, keep your feet square up and drive through. If it's a long pass and you're with the receiver, turn yourself into a basketball player and don't let him get the pass. And on offense, you quarterbacks, let the ball go. Don't stand there and think, can I complete it? And you halfbacks who fumbled before, when you get into traffic, use two hands. That's all God gave you. <laughs> if you're going to fumble again, shove it in a hole in your body somewhere. <laughs> then when you cough it up, the other team won't want to touch it. <laughs> you know, Bill, it's, it's amazing how you can simplify the game that much. <laughs> but uh, uh, those who can simplify have nothing at stake. <laughs> Bill, on a serious note, Temple's really starting to move up. They, they're playing a real big-time schedule. It's not easy for them, but how as an ex-player, and even as an alumnus, do you feel about that? I feel very, very good, especially about what I've seen today. I know that the coach needs talent. If he has the talent, I've watched the assignments, and if he has the talent, we can beat these people. And I know a lot of people in Pittsburgh will feel the opposite, but I do know that if we get the talent here, we're going to fill up the stadium. I'm happy with what I see. Given the fact that a kid uh, wasn't a defensive back in his senior year is now playing defensive back, you can't ask a kid to do that. He doesn't have the instinct, the awareness. He's doing okay. The kids don't close fast enough. Now we have to watch out for the mental attitude in the second half. Do they look up at the clock and say, gee whiz, how can we come back from this? Any mistake after this, we do need a break. If we can get a break, then it depends on where they are mentally as to how they can come back. We do need to take a ball in for a touchdown. Bill, uh, I know through a career that saw you go through an 0-27 streak, there must have been many, many highlights. And uh, uh, what is your greatest moment as a, as a Temple athlete? My greatest moment as a Temple athlete was when I dropped the pass and a guy came up late and hit me in the face with a forearm and he got a 15-yard penalty. <laughs> and you got credit for the reception. <laughs> exactly. Bill, thank you so much for being with us. And I know you take uh, uh, pride in what's happened here so far this afternoon, even though Temple is trailing 17 to 3. Well, they've All I want people to know is take a look at this stadium. And if we get the talent, I promise you we're going to be able to fill this. And down on that field will be a frightened or a concerned Notre Dame 
USC, Alabama, or Western Michigan. <laughs> very good. Bill, thank you very much for being with us. Do I get a prize or anything for this? Bob is going to take good care of you. Oh, Bob is going to take good care of you. Thank you. Bill Cosby joining us here at halftime. Our score is Pitt leading Temple by a score of 17 to 3. Talk about a great American champion. That's what we're going to talk about next. He plays for the University of Pittsburgh, and his name is Alonzo Hampton. Let's meet him. The oil heat industry presents great American champions. This defensive back doesn't entertain the sidelines very often. As a two year Panther Alonzo Hampton is fast becoming one of the country's top cornerbacks. Hampton transferred from a California community college two years ago and last fall walked up his starting position. During the 88 season he led his team with five interceptions four pass deflections and as a punt returner ran back 34 for 360 yards. Those credentials put him at the top of many preseason All America lists but it's not resume references that coach Mike Gottfried looks to Hampton for. I consider him probably one of the best defensive backs in the country right now. He's uh, strong enough to cover the run, and he's fast enough. He does a great job in pass coverage. He's somebody who can play man-to-man, -man, he can play zone, he can play either one, and do them uh, both very efficiently. His outstanding performance this season is inspired by an honor he was presented with last spring, given to the most valuable defensive back on the team called the Johnny Majors Award. Uh, that was really, you know, uh, something special for me. That's something that I had set a goal to do. You know, because um, both the players who did it my previous two years before me, they both went on into the NFL. And it's just a big accomplishment for them to pick me as the best defensive back on the team. Hampton's habit of playing well in big games showed in his two interceptions against Boston College this year, matched up against Marcus Cherry. But that's the way it is for good football players. The best welcome the challenge of playing against the best. On behalf of the heating oil dealers of Pennsylvania, I'd like to recognize you for being the great American champion of the week and congratulate you on your many achievements in the field and off the field. Thanks a lot. Thanks. Alonzo Hampton, a great defensive back and a good stable of them to play alongside at Pitt. He followed Gary Richards out of uh, Riverside Junior College, and he's been a, not only a top defensive back, but as we pointed out, a great punt returner as well. There you see our score at halftime at Veterans Stadium in Philadelphia. It's Pittsburgh 17 and Temple 3. We'll be right back. Hey, Josh. Of all the days to run away. Poor Josh. It's so hot. It's so hot that the uh, ocean's drying up. Can't take it. Gonna be even hotter tomorrow. Looks so good. I just got I guess we'll have to rent out his room. Can't beat the feeling. There's a special breed of people who do battle day after day. Their arena, the business world. Their territory, the road. They are the road warriors. Ray? Ray Cave. On the road again, huh? Three cities this week. Hey, Mary Hansen, sales director for land. Hi. And Say, Howard Johnson is the place the road warrior chooses when he gets ready for the road again and again. Howard Johnson, home of the Road Warriors. You're looking sharp. You're looking good. You've come so far. And we know how to make the most of who you are. Where the race is run. The Gillette Atra Plus system and Gillette Foamy Shave Cream together, the best a man can get. Carolyn Altobelli graduated fifth in her class at Little Flower High. She will major in mechanical engineering. She chose Temple. Julie Jackson graduated second in her class of 825 at Overbrook High. She chose Temple. Very bright people. They could have gone anywhere they wanted. They chose Temple.
Now it's time for the Sunoco School Board, brought to you by your local Sunoco dealer who offers you Sunoco Ultra 94. Let's look across the map of college football this afternoon and see what's happening. Wake Forest leading North Carolina there at halftime, 10-7. We saw Wake Forest earlier against Army. Auburn, of course, ahead of Kentucky in the second quarter, 14-6. And Penn State and Rutgers battling it out at the Meadowlands. They're scoreless in the second. Interesting score at West Virginia. Virginia Tech ahead, 6-0 in the second period. That game at Morgantown. Some of our great American independents in action today. Army at Duke, Air Force at Navy, and a big one, Florida State at Syracuse. Dick McPherson was saying that everybody that comes into the Dome now talks about the advantages he has, and he says, you know, we got a great winning streak, and that winning streak goes on each week. This week is a little tougher with Florida State. Well, Florida State comes calling, and our score right now shows Pittsburgh leading Temple by a score of 17-3. to As we look at uh, a Pittsburgh team that's played outstanding, take advantage of every opportunity that's given them, but a, tem a Temple team that has some talent. We're going to meet one of those players right now, our student athlete of the week from Temple University wide receiver Rich Drake. The Great American Independent Football Student Athlete of the Week, presented by Infinity, a new concept in luxury cars. This week, our award goes to Rich Drayton. In only his junior year, Rich is Temple's leading receiver and holds Temple's record for single game receiving yardage. But in the balance between athlete and student, Rich has old academic habits which are hard to beat. It's a habit from my parents always telling me, always asking me, have I done my homework, have I done this? So I really can't relax now unless I know I have everything done. Rich is adept at finding the end zone, and off the field, he's just as clear about his direction. Athletics are not always going to be there. So I, I came here to get my education so I can start my own business. So I'm going to have to be always going to work, dreading work. And um, I know that someday, even if I do go make it to the pro ranks, that Football is not always going to be there, so I consider myself a student first. Rich's parents taught him the work ethic, and Rich has his own message. So why would you come to school for four years, get out and then have to do some work when you're working hard every day, when you could be using your mind instead of working hard every day? Rich Drayton would be a, like to be a little bit busier on the field. He's caught one pass so far this afternoon. His team, Temple, trailing Pittsburgh here at halftime at the Vet, 17-3. We now pause for a word from your local station. Steelers Bengals edition Sunday at 11 and Monday at 6 on WTAE 4 News. People think diabetes isn't all that bad. Just take insulin and everything will be okay. Sure, diabetics need medication. Sure, they have to watch what they eat. But it's not like they're handicapped for life. Right? This year, 6,000 more Americans will go blind because of diabetes. JDF is leading research to find a cure. Support JDF. Sometimes mornings can be pretty hard to face. So to help you get going, now there's WTAE for news this morning. Get a head start on the day's news, the latest weather, and up-to-the-minute traffic reports. Don't face mornings alone. Wake up to WTAE for news this morning, weekdays at 6 and 6.30 a.m. This fall, Who's the Boss will be here every day for some of your favorite shows. Look at this lineup. That's right, Tony. Each weekday after Who's the Boss, catch all the fun at the Seaver household on Growing Pains at 4.30. Burper. Hey, I don't know nothing about burping no baby. Then at 5, the laughs are on the house with the gang at Cheers. How's life in the fast lane, Normie? Beats me. I can't find the on-ramp. Remember, the fun starts at 4 each weekday here on WTAE-TV. All that great entertainment all on one station? I wonder what's left for the other guys. JP Sports exclusive presentation of Great American Independent Football is brought to you by Jenny Light, some serious suds. By Howard Johnson, where the road warrior gets ready for the road. 
by Thumans, the deli best, makers of the official hot dog of great American independent football. And by Infinity, a new concept in luxury cars. Welcome back to Veterans Stadium in Philadelphia as Mike Gottfried looks on from the far sideline. Jerry Burnt from the near sideline. You can only wonder what they said to their respective teams at halftime. Jerry Burnt has to be happy with a lot of things except the two turnovers, actually the three turnovers and the three scores that resulted because of that. Jeff Van Horn getting sent to kick off. Steve Martin here with Bob Cassiola. Ball momentarily falls off the tee. Shoes don't. Looks like he dressed like me this morning. Well, what he's got is he's got a cleat on his left foot and he's got a sneaker on his right foot. He kicks to the sneaker. Leslie Shepard and Fred Gunner are going to be back deep. Bob Wright started the scoring for Temple with a field goal from 24 yards out and then 17 unanswered points by Pitt, all set up by turnovers, have the Panthers in the lead 17 to 3. Leslie Shepard at the goal line. Out to the 21 yard line. And he's brought down there. He's going to be stopped by number 17, Bobby Boykin. And here are the first half stats. Things kind of point out penalties and turnovers. The only thing, too, is Pitt's passing yardage. And that, of course, comes from a couple of long bombs they threw. But it's a pretty even ball game. Mistakes on the part of Temple. That's the, the turnover thing that you highlighted. That has been the difference. It's taken them away from opportunities to score in close and giving the ball back to Pitt, who converted them into scores. This young man has performed well. Victor Lay bringing the Temple offense out on the field at the 21, first and 10. Back to throw, has some pressure, gets hit, and goes down. Eats the football at the 20-yard line, and in on the stop, Keith Hamilton. Hamilton had five sacks coming in, his second sack of the day. Actually, the protection was pretty good. He was looking quick to deliver the football. Good coverage this time by Pitt, looking for the pass on early down. Good hands there by Spindler, forcing him to bring the ball down, and by that time, the defense got to him. But he took the sack, he uh, lost a couple of yards, he did not give up the football, looking now at second down and 11. Second and 11 from the 19-yard line. Hale and Stevenson behind him. It's the draw to Stevenson. Stevenson up over the 20 to the 22. Craig Gobb is in there for the stop along with Curtis Bray. 58, Parrish, the left tackle, moved before the snap, and that's why the flag was thrown. So a penalty may kill the play. Second down, but Pitt may make a decision. It seems though they didn't get much yardage to bring up third down. Let's see what the call's going to be. John Sophie. <laughs> Offsetting penalties, a face mask as opposed to an illegal procedure. Watch on the left side here, number 58. That is James Parrish. And he'll move right now before the snap. That's what they get him for. After they run the play here to Venture Stevenson, they're going to get a face mask penalty. I don't know where the face mask is at all. They got him on the arm, but they gave him a gift, so they repeat the play. Second and 11. Second and 11. It's Johnson in motion to the top, puts three receivers that side. Lay looks in that direction and finds Johnson is tight end. Now I believe it's his fifth catch of the day. He's out over the 20 to the 23-yard line. Good coverage here. Pittsburgh coming up a little tighter on the receivers, not giving him that short pass that time. They gave it to the tight end, kept it in front of him, gave him four yards. Here it is. He looks upfield first, looks now for his outlet. There's the pass, well thrown, but good coverage on the corner by McDonald. The linebacker, the outside linebacker, Rico McDonald, a sophomore out of Patterson, New Jersey. 19 tackles in four games entering this particular game with Temple. We talked about a work ethic. They say he's got the best on the team. Works in the offseason, works at everything, wants to be better. Third down and seven from the 24. Pitt leading Temple 17 to three. Temple with the ball. Lay throws to the flash to Johnson. He was double covered and the ball goes incomplete. Gobb is over there covering on the play with Marcus Washington. There's Craig Gobb. Middle linebacker plays a big role in the Pittsburgh defense. He's the man who calls all of the signals and the audibles and the changes, and he's succeeding a guy, Jerry Osowski, who did that so very well for two years at Pitt. Played enough last year, got uh, enough experience, very bright, aggressive football player, and he's in charge of that defense. And this is exactly what Jerry Burnt didn't want to happen. 
Three downs, have to kick the ball, give it back to Pittsburgh, and with the wind blowing here, they could get pretty good field position. But this is the first time that it's happened all afternoon. Ed Liberati is into the ball game. Liberati, who has an excellent average, about 48 yards a kick. It's off a nice high hanger. Alonzo Hampton back at his 36. They'll take it and goes to the 39-yard line. It's a 40-yard kick and a three-yard return. So Ed Liberati shows he's not cold. Comes on and makes a nice kick. Dean Height is in on the tackle for Temple. Pittsburgh leading 17-3, and the Panthers will have the ball. What, what is luxury? Is it something expensive? Uh, or is it something that gives you satisfaction? Something that uh, impresses somebody else, or is it something that impresses you? We have some new ideas on the subject, and if you have some time, we'd like to share them with you. Infinity. What's for lunch? Thumans. What's for lunch? Thumans. What's for lunch? Thumans. I only want the best for my family. Thumans cold cuts are extremely lean. No artificial coloring, lower in salt. There's absolutely no MSG. And the kids just love them. What's for lunch? An automotive designer looks at the shapes of nature the soft lines. And because he sees things a certain way, those lines suggest an automobile design that is honest and natural, and where the driver is more important than the car itself. And what is discovered just watching nature is an ancient Japanese notion of what is beautiful. It's called infinity. Well, here's a comparison between our two quarterbacks this afternoon and Victor Lay at 11 for 19. He's not having a bad day. He normally completes 42 percent. He's ahead of that this afternoon. And look at Van Pelt's number, 7 out of 10, 149. Big thing that's going to spook Victor Lay are the two interceptions. First and 10 for Pittsburgh. Herman Richards gets outside. Flag thrown on the play. He's driven out at his own 48-yard line. That's the ability of Richards to get outside, just run to the sideline, sheer speed, the ability to cut up inside. Uh, a flag is thrown. It may have been thrown against the offense. It looks that way. It has been hit by penalties this afternoon. This will be their sixth. We are not hearing John Soffey make the call this afternoon. We're having a little bit of technical difficulty there, and we'll get back at that. The key here is early in this third period for Temple to get a break, get the ball back to their offense, or create something. They can't afford to let Pitt move and score again or score early. Four of Pitt's six penalties have been of the holding variety. That's that's 10, 10 yards a whack. So that's 40 yards right there. Alex Van Pelt looking at the situation that uh, his offense has handed him here and it's shows him looking at first down and 20. Very interesting. We talked about substitutions on Pitt on their defense substituting whole units. Today they've substituted three tailbacks. Richards, Walker and Turner. Walker in the game right now alternating him on every offensive every offensive snap. Threw it and Tootin are wide to the top but this is going to be Walker getting some yardage. Pull back on the tailback dive. Tackled by Fred Gunter out to the 39-yard line. It'll be a gain of nine. Mike Constantatos also helped out. Let's look at it again. There's the rushes. Play selection on first down. Very unusual. Came in. They run the ball 13 out of 15 running plays. Here they run back up inside. He runs up behind his right guard, Caliguire, his center, Sestelli. Good blocking up front by the pit offensive line. They got a great block on Kenyatta Rush, who's been in their face all afternoon. Second down and about 10. And help. Passes to Walker in the flats, but he can't hang on. Swung him into the flat. He was wide open. Took his eye off the football. Started to look up. Feel looking for number 51. Lorenzo Square who was coming from inside out. When he took his eye off the ball. That was the, uh, the reception went out the window. Van Pelt. So far today against Pacific. Slow day that day. 141 yards. They didn't need it. They had a lot of offense. They put on the board. But against West Virginia and Syracuse. Two 300 yard days. 
Third down coming up. Pitt up 17 to 3. 10 yards to go for the first. Flat pass incomplete for Kervin Richards. Covering all the play, Manny Carlos. Great rush that time for the Owls. That time, number 86, James Harris. Look, it was at 86. Excuse me. Kenyatta Rush was in his face put pressure on him immediately, and he threw the ball short. One of the few times today somebody had free access to the quarterback. Oakland up 3 to nothing over Toronto, bottom of the third at the Sky Dome, but uh, you should note that the team that has scored first has lost every game in this series thus far. Oakland leading 2-1 to one of the best of seven American League series. Greenfield on the punt for pick. Good sequence by the uh, Temple defense. They got a penalty to help them, but they held them. They're going to get the ball back here. McCoy deep. Nice kick by Greenfield. Great kick. And it's going to roll out of bounds at the 15, make it the 14-yard line, a 46-yard punt by Greenfield. So that's right on the money as far as his punt average is concerned. It's Pitt 17, Temple 3. We now pause for a word from your local stations. Look at Lumina. An all-new 1990 midsize Chevrolet at your super Chevy dealers. Look. Chevy Lumina with more standard power than Taurus. Look at Lumina. With more room than Taurus, Dynasty, or Accord. Look at Lumina. Six passengers ride in comfort. Look at Lumina. With 750 cash back, it's priced hundreds less than the competition. Look at Lumina. Look at the 1990 Lumina. Now at your super Chevy dealers. A Pittsburgh National Home Equity Credit Line can turn your house into a bigger one with a low 9.75% introductory rate. Turn it into a new car and drive away with some big tax savings. Or turn it into almost anything else. Because you pay no closing costs, you'll save hundreds of dollars right away. So visit or call and turn this extraordinary loan application into just about anything at Pittsburgh National. Welcome back to Veterans Stadium in Philadelphia. Homecoming for the Temple Owls. They trail Pittsburgh by a score of 17 to 3. Temple coming out with the football at their own 15 yard line after a nice punt by Brian Greenfield. Steve Martin here along with Bob Cassiola for an afternoon of Great American Independent Football. Ventress Stevenson threads his way back to the line of scrimmage and gets very little more where he goes down into the grasp of Nelson Walker. And now for the first time today, we seem to see some of the backup people in that 1A unit now in the ballgame for Pitt. Nelson Walker was a defensive end last season. He's an experienced player. They've moved in the linebacker. He's just got to learn the linebacker position, but he's quick. 6'3", 230. Nice job. Just held Stevenson to a short game. Ain't of one. In fact, it's second and nine. Play. Quick drop. Pass to the flat complete to Rich Drayton. Drayton is close to first down yardage, brought down there by Robert Bradley. Bradley's played extremely well in the corner. That time he cushioned a little bit. Good pass again, Lay, putting it on the sideline, getting the ball to Drayton. Drayton, knowing with a first down, Marcus R gets the first down. Moves the chains out to the 25-yard line. Let's look at it again. There's the pass. Well thrown. Victor Lay has delivered the ball extremely well. Probably his best game of the season. Great effort there by Drayton to get to the chains and make the first down. We have seen Anthony Richardson once this afternoon. There you're looking at Rich Drake. Two catches for 31 yards. This time the handoff goes straight ahead and there's not much there for Roman Hale, the fullback. Up over the 25-yard line to the 27. Mark Spindler and Craig Gobb, the middle linebacker, there to pick him up. Mark Spindler, only a junior, 6'5", 270 out of Scranton, Pennsylvania. And in the words of his coach, he dictates the tempo of the game as we look at Jerry Burnt. Because he's so quick and he makes so many moves, he can put pressure on the run as he did there and put pressure on the pass. Second, nine coming once again. Okay. Quick five-step drop, fires to the flat to Johnson. Was it complete? They say yes, and it's going to be a fumble recovered by Pittsburgh. 
Robert Bradley was the man who plied it loose. Let's see who picked it up. What a day Bradley's had. What a day Bradley's had. Two pass interceptions. It's Pitt's a fumble ball. caused. It is Pitt's ball. And coming up with the fumble recovery looks to be Keith Hamilton, the freshman that we just talked about from Lynchburg, Virginia. Watch this. The tight end again. Good drop, good protection. Puts the ball right here as he comes back to the football. And here comes Bradley. Makes the hit. Helmet right on the ball as he came through it. And there's the fumble recovery. Big turnover again. And of course, this time it hurts because it's deep in Temple territory. 21 turnovers for Temple thus far this season in six games, actually five and a half here. And their opponents have only turned the ball over twice. Hit at the Temple 25. Up 17 to three and looking for more. Also looking for more, Kervin Richards. And he gets down to the 19 yard line. Santos Stevens making the tackle. Let's take a look at this play once again on the catch by Maurice Johnson. Well, the question some people might have is, did he catch it or not? Here's the pass. Here's the delivery. And he fumbled it. The official who called it was behind the play. He called it a completion, gave it the fumble. Close call. Pitt trying to capitalize on it. Second and three. Now get straight ahead. Looks like Derek Lewis has the football down to the 15 yard line. He's going to be very close to a first down. You see that pass, Larry? Very close as they unpile. Dean Caliguire gets off off the pile last. Looks like the ball was loose there for a moment. Looks like the pit offensive line really digging in and making some holes now. And they're an experienced and sizable group, as we know. On the left side, Matus and Getz and Caliguire, of course, moving from center to right guard. Those three all back from last year. The new faces, Sestelli, the center, only a freshman. And the right tackle, Lavorio, he's a freshman. But both, 165, 270, Lavorio, Sestelli, 6'3", 255. So they're, they're big enough. You see the indication by the referee of how short Pitt is from a first down. It'll bring up third and inches as the ball rest just shy of the 15 yard line. Mike Gottfried uh, wants this one. He got to get a score here. He wants to get this thing and make it a little more comfortable. He knows what can happen in any football game. Well you, he talked to us yesterday about this team keeping its focus keeping its focus on the job that it needs to do and that job is is to take one game at a time not look ahead down the schedule where Notre Dame and Miami and some of these other people lay. Third and inches. Van Pelt and everybody in tight except two. Handoff goes to Walker. No, that's Lewis. And Lewis, their short yardage specialist, has the first down. Inside the 15 to the 14 yard line. Manny Carlos and Eric Warren in on the stop for Temple. You know, Derek Lewis is a story unto himself. Only a freshman out of Youngstown, Ohio. Watch this from a low angle. Watch the surge of the offensive line. Carlos, 43, gets in there. There's Carlos making the hit, but he's so low. And Lewis at 6'2, 225, just runs through that tackle, falls forward, gets the first down. But Lewis came into this game carrying a football for 50 yards. Good, strong back. Good hands, like to throw to him out of the backfield. And he scored three touchdowns. Here's Van Pelt looking left. Wants to lock it to Truett in the end zone. Does he make the catch? No. Mobley is there to cover. Boy, have they been working against Mobley. <laughs> They've been looking for him, trying to find him and go to work on him. That time, they had him beat again. And he's hurt. He fortunately, got his hand in the last minute to make the play. Well-designed play. Play action brought the receiver all the way across the formation, caught Temple in man coverage, and Mobley just stayed long enough with him to get his hands on it. Watch it there. Here he comes. Watch Mobley right here. Just gets his hand in there. Ooh, Great Truett, effort. Truett had a second the chance of off, the, uh, off the shoulder pads and couldn't come up with it either. Mobley comes off the field. They've had some injuries at cornerback. Let's look at it again. Could almost call that uh, face masking in a way because he never looked for the football. Two stabs at it, and Truett could not come up with it, almost did. Second down now, and 10 at the 14-yard line. Hit in Temple territory. Van Pelt, screen pass, Lewis sidelines incomplete. What a great job out there. Kenyatta Rush and Santos Stevens making the play. Smell that play, and Rush, who's had an outstanding day from his defensive tackle position. 
got out there in front of the play. It was never there. Actually, I think Van Pelt took a chance trying to put that ball up. Brings up third down now and 10 from the 14. You got to say a lot of positive things about this Temple defense. They're trailing 17-3. They got their backs against the wall here, but they're playing tough on every down. Pitt is working for everything offensively. Saw Eric Fenwick there with Kenyatta Rush. Third down and 10. Van Pelt to throw. A little flare pass is in the flats, incomplete. That time he felt the pressure. He felt the pressure a little bit. Good pressure on the corner again. Manny Carlos was the man who put the heat on and the pass intended for Turner. Watch this. As Van Pelt drops, he's got two receivers to the left side here, and he's bringing his, his intended receiver, his, his uh, number 35, Ricky Turner, across underneath that. Good job by Carlos coverage, but also good pressure by the front four, Warren, Constanos, Rush, and Angeli. Frazier, who's 7 for 10 and hit a 32-yarder, a 31-yarder earlier, is going from 32 this time. There's the kick. It is up, and it is good. And Pittsburgh tacks on another three, and yet another Temple turnover. All of the Pitt scores have come as a result of turnovers, but wait, we've got to stop it. They're going to get a penalty against Temple for rush, roughing the kicker. Of course, it happens after the play, and it'll be... Uh, it's, we can't hear him, but he's going to put it on on the kickoff. That's right. As Frazier walks off, let's see it again. It's Hetzler with a hold, and Gunter runs into him. Close. Good acting job. Frazier did a nice job there. But he did hit him, and that's the play. And so that'll give Van Horn, when he gets set to kick off, uh, five yards extra. Temple, 21 turnovers in 1989. Four here today that have led directly to scores. Three interceptions. Actually, two interceptions and two fumbles. And Pitt leading here by a score of 20 to 3. Getting set for Pitt's kickoff when we return from Veterans Stadium in Philadelphia. It's Pittsburgh 20, Temple 3 in the third quarter. People use all kinds of sophisticated machines to raise their heart rate. We'd like to recommend another one. The pulse quickening technology of Ford Probe. It'll get your motor running. of Great American Independent Football is brought to you in part by Ford and your local Ford dealer. Have you driven a Ford lately? Steve Martin here along with Bob Cassiola. Look at Mike Gottfried of uh, Pittsburgh. He's got some great defensive weapons. One of them is Mark Spindler, his outstanding junior defensive lineman. I'll say it right here, and, I, and I've said it all along. If there's a better defensive lineman out there, I don't know where he's at. And we've played against some very good ones. And uh, if there's an Outland candidate to win an Outland trophy in Pittsburgh, it's Mark Spinner. He's played outstanding. He plays every play like it's a Super Bowl. Uh, he'll play hard tomorrow. He'll play hard uh, Sunday, Monday, whatever he wants. He's a throwback to the 50s. And the best compliment I could give him was I consider Mike Ditkin, Joe Schmidt, probably the guys that best characterize Pitt football. Blood and gut guys that are going to run down and block and make tackles, but he's the same kind of guy, and that's the best compliment I can give him. Certainly, we're going to get a good look at him here as we go through the third quarter, and he'll play an instrumental role as Mike Gottfried walks down the sidelines. As you look at that record, that's a record of building programs. Murray State, he started off Cincinnati, Kansas came to Pitt, and he uh, he's had some good ones, and those are pretty strong words about a great young player in Mark Spindler. He's had a very active day today, and as we've noted many times, he's being double teamed with the run block as well as the pass block. That's how much respect he commands. Van Horn with a kick. Freddie Gunner catches at the five. Gunner oh, straight up the gut, and he gets hit at the 16-yard line. And let's see, Prentice Wright was the man who made the hit. We've got a flag thrown in after. 
Watch number 68, Eric Holsworth. He's the one that comes in here, too. Watch on the left side. There's Holsworth, 68. He also gets a part of it. He had a scissors effect on Fred Gunter. Dead ball personal foul. Again, we're having some technical difficulty with the microphone and John Soffy. But that's the call. The personal foul is going to be against Temple and they'll mark it off half the distance. They come back with Victor Lay at quarterback. Venture Stevenson at tailback. It's after the play, so it'll bring up some first and 20. So it's first down 20. And here comes Victor Lay and company, as you said, Bob. And McCoy and Drayton are as split ends to the wide sideline. They're otherwise set up in the eye with Ventress Stevenson dotting it. From the six, Stevenson. Stutter step, comes in a little high and gets out to the 13-yard line. Boy, he can find a seam, and there wasn't much of a seam there that time, but he, he found enough to get upfield and make uh, about five yards out of a play that had no gain attached to it when it started out. Uh, Hit is put in their 1A unit. Nelson Walker walks away from the tackle that time. Valis Mark Spindler on the sidelines. Bob Valiceni, who came here from the University of Maryland, actually uh, spent time as an assistant coach at Kansas with Mike Godfrey, now heads up the defense. The 1A unit is the second unit, but he likes to refer to him as not second, but 1A, and that's who's in there now. On second down, flat pass to Drake. Brayton trying to get some room out there over the 21-yard line. He's going to be shy of the first down. Driven out of bounds by Robert Bradley, who's had himself an afternoon. He sure has. He's played extremely well on the corner against the run. And, of course, coming up with big hits to cause a fumble and an interception in a key position when Temple was driving for a touchdown. Victor Lay picking away, trying to get upfield, trying to make it in short gains, not come up with a big play. Now he faces a crucial. It's third and five. The ball sitting on his own 22-yard line. Temple would like to sustain this drive and get upfield and try to get back in his ball game. Three wide receivers, including the tight end to the right side. Now Johnson will line up left. Brayton's up there. McCoy and Chambers to the bottom side on third and five. Lay upfield, throws a bullet, almost intercepted. Nearly picked off by Dan Crossman. Tough place to make the completion as he was looking for McCoy coming down and cutting across the middle. He had linebackers in front of him, and the safeties were descending on McCoy. Really, he should have looked for another pat, another receiver. Would have been a lot easier for him as you look at Dan Crossman, and he's quite a story unto himself. Yes, he is. He went, was at Kansas and then transferred over to Pittsburgh, played the fullback for a while, and like uh, uh, Lewis Riddick, moved to the secondary where he played originally at Kansas. Howes enjoyed uh, after his uh, sitting out on his transfer year. Very good success at Pitt. Ed Liberati now onto the field as Temple's offense takes on a disturbing pattern for Jerry Burnt. Three downs and out. Here's the kick nearly blocked. Big rush. Liberati gets it away. And it is going to be down by Leslie Shepard at the 45-yard line of Pitt after a 33-yard journey. That time Pitt came after him with 10 people, and, and Liberati sort of took his time, and he really had to rush the punt. Panthers lead Temple by a score of 20 to 3, 6 18 left in the third. We see you back. <laughs> oh no. Hey, Buzzface. Matthew, did you lose your razor? I can't get around my Adam's apple. You can't get around half your face. <laughs> you can reach every place on your face with the new Slim Twin razor system. Slim Twin has the slimmest cartridge to shave hard to reach places and a choice of pivot or fixed head shaving. That's pretty good. How do I look? Ugly. <laughs> new Slim Twin reaches every place on every face. From Shake. Genesee, brewed the same traditional way for over a hundred years. It's not just a beer, it's a Jenny. Ed Liberati on the field for only the second time this afternoon. He's known for his quick release or quick operation time. Wasn't too quick this time. Now look at this rush. He should read that. He's experienced. He just took his time with that. Didn't get off a great punt, but got a pretty good roll to get the ball to the 45-yard line. 
That's where Pitt will take over. The last two drives have started in nice territory at the Temple 25 and now at their own 45. This is Ricky Turner. Turner cuts up field to the 48-yard line. Brought down by Santo Stevens. Pitt, Pitt running a lot of misdirection and getting trying to get up in the hole, countering stuff. But the Temple defensive line, Rush, Constantotis, Warren, and Angeli doing a good job of coming off blocks to make the play as we look at Wake Forest up on North Carolina in the third period by three. No change in that Auburn, Kentucky score there at the half, 14-6 Auburn. That lost to Tennessee a week ago. Second down coming up now for Pitt. This time they go to the first man through, and it's going to be Adam. Uh, no, that's going to be a new player on Jimmer Bundy. Gets the ball, the fullback. Penn State leading Rutgers at halftime of the Meadowlands, 7-0. Eric Warren in on the stop for Temple. And look at this in Morgantown, Bob. Virginia Tech, they're playing a lot better than a lot of people thought they would. Frank Beamer's doing a good job down there. 9-0 over West Virginia at Morgantown. And they're at intermission. Now we have a timeout on the field. The timeout is going to be called by Temple. With third down coming, the Temple defense wants to talk things over as they see a key decision coming up here for That's right. That's Pittsburgh. And uh, stay tuned at the conclusion of today's game. We're going to be selecting a Schick most valuable player from each team this afternoon. We've got plenty of candidates. Robert Bradley is a possibility. Brad Van, uh, Alex Van Pelt is also a possibility. As Pitt. you look, yeah, as you look at the def defensive huddle there with uh, Chismar, the defensive coordinator, and there's Van Pelt over talking to the offense. We look ahead, the road ahead for the Pitt Panthers, and it's uh, it's pretty impressive. Maybe next week, and then they're at Notre Dame, and they're home against Miami, East Carolina, which right now is playing fairly well, 3-0-1. Penn State. Always a tough one. For Temple, they go to Boston College next week. Then they have a week off before taking on Northern Illinois here. And then they go between the hedges at Georgia. And they wind up with Rutgers as well. Rutgers uh, pit game, by the way, is that game that's being played in Ireland this year. So uh -huh. they'll be going over there as several teams have done over the last couple of years for the East. Last year was Army Boston College. Boston College. Struggling this year a little bit. They're idle today as you see the Temple Owl down along the sidelines. Defense looks for a big play here. Temple called this time out. Play back in third and six at midfield. Van Pelt to throw. Has time. Has his man complete. Baron Jackson at the 43. Brought down at the 41 yard line by Lorenzo Square and David Jones. Good job. Excellent job. Van Pelt setting up, waiting, coming to the wide receiver Jackson on the corner. Got zone coverage. Temple came up and faked the blitz. They had the two safe, the safety man and the strong safety up there, then backed off of it. He read it, went to his wide receiver, got the first down. Van Pelt returns to the huddle after getting the call from the sideline after delivering Baron Jackson's fourth reception of the season. Comes up first and ten at Temple Territory at the 41. 448 left to go on the third. Pitt leading 20 to 3. This is Ricky Turner, and he is trapped in the backfield. Making a nice hit that time. Taylor. Eric Warren also in on the stop as well. Taylor was a man who leveled it. He's the rover back. The strong safety came up from the left side. Watch on the left side of the screen. You'll see number 22. He just came right up on the line of scrimmage, came inside, made the hit. Loss of uh, yardage uh, as Pittsburgh running on the early downs. Temple defensively doing a good job against the run. It's been the pass where they've gotten into trouble. Loss of two on the play brings up second and 12. And Pell fakes a play action. Looking downfield, wanted his tight end. Had two tight ends into the pattern that time. Moore and also. Seaman was in there. Tim Hall was covering. He threw the ball a little bit behind his receiver, came crossing across, came, came crossing from the left side, the tight end. Good coverage that time by Greg Taylor again, the strong safety. Looked back, forced the ball back inside. And again, Pittsburgh looking at a third and 11. Temple called timeout last time this happened. A little reluctant to come after Van Pelt with any all-out rush because they know that forces man coverage and they really respect the pit uh, wide receivers. Ricky Turner is back there as the lone setback. We've got Tootin and Williams, two dangerous receivers to the top side. Van Pelt giving them a look. And some time now, Constantinos wraps him up. 
back at midfield. Great play by Mike Constantinos and also coming away with a nice play as well, Kenyatta Rush. Good job of coverage by Temple that time because he looked upfield. There was no, no one open. Watch this. Got, gets his protection early on. He's looking upfield. He's looking to go deep. He's looking for two or Williams. They're covered. Finally, the front defensive four closes in on him and makes the sack. This brings Greenfield into the game. He'll have to punt again. Ball at midfield. Ooh, it's off on the ice. That is going to be McCoy at the five. McCoy. Almost an opening. Shoestring tackle brings him down at the 20-yard line. A 43-yard punt and a 14-yard return on the play by Temple. The announcers for this game are selected and compensated by J.P. Sports. This broadcast is a copyright presentation. Any use of this broadcast without the express permission of the University of Pittsburgh and Temple University is prohibited. Temple coming out. Their defense is held. They are first and 10 at their own 20-yard line. Anthony Richardson is back into the ball game at quarterback. And there's defensive coach on the sidelines congratulating his unit. Keep up the pressure, he's saying. Richardson gives to Stevenson, and Stevenson has some room out to the 23-yard line. The defensive play has played with terrific enthusiasm and intensity all afternoon. They deserve a lot of credit. The scores for Pitt have come through turnovers, giving them opportunities to get the football back. And uh, you've got to say that the Temple defensively, particularly against the run, has done an excellent job. On the other hand, the Pitt defense has had it too, and they've created tough situations. Three plays and a punt, three plays and a fumble, three plays and a punt prior to this sequence. That's what the defense is forced on Temple. Second down and seven. And off straight ahead over the 25-yard line. Carrying on the play. Heading up off the pile looks to be... Uh, that's going to be Scott McNair. Back up tailback. Getting the call at the tailback spot. He picked up about two yards, makes it third down and four from the 26. Temple is not converted on the last three third down opportunities here. And this is really Richardson's first true throwing situation, and he's not going to throw. He's going to go to the tailback once again, McNair, and there's not much there. Very unusual call. Third down and four. They run the uh, what looks like the beginning of an option. They hand the, the first back through. Pitt defensively closes off the middle there. 1A defense was in the game. And that time, all of a sudden, they come up fourth and short. You'd think they'd either put it on the corner with the pitch, or they would have thrown the ball. Again, this is a third, fourth series, three downs and a punt. Liberati must be aware. Here they come again. They're lining up 10 people on the line of scrimmage. Last time, they nearly got to him. Alonzo Hampton is back deep to get the kick of Ed Liberati. Liberati with a 39-yard average. Got away with a 33-yard one under pressure last time around. Gets a better one off this time. He's not going to feel that. Ooh. Hampton will let it fly. Goes back to about the 30-yard line with a Temple roll. So back to the 30, a 43-yard punt, no return on the play as Pittsburgh's starting to come back out onto the field offensively. You know, Jerry Burnt talked about turnovers that keep him in a ball game. They plagued him all season, and here's what's happened today. Interception, touchdown. Fumble, they had to punt the ball. The next time they intercepted, they got a field goal, a fumble, a field goal. They had it all up. It comes to 13 of their points came through the turnovers. 20 to 3, our score with Pitt leading Temple. At this point in time, you take away those turnovers, Bob. It's been a great equalizer in the first half, and Temple looks even. In the second half, Pitt's defense has risen to the task. Van Pelt to throw on first. Looking deep for Williams. Williams had a step and coming back to make the play. It's going to be Keita Crespina of Temple. First time today they've sprinted Van Pelt on the corner instead of dropping back with him or play action, and they sprinted him to get a little bit away from the rush, and he put the ball up to his wide receiver on the corner, and Crespina played him step for step. Good job defensively. Quick third quarter about to come to an end in about 51 seconds. Second down coming up in 10 for Pitt at their own 30. They lead here 20 to 3. Touchdown passes. Van Pelt to Tootin and Williams and a pair of field goals by Ed Frazier. Van Pelt play fake pitch over the middle. It is complete.
complete to his tight end. Out near midfield, that is going to be Seaman, Eric Seaman, picking up the reception, the tackle made by Gary Mobley. Seaman came into this game with five receptions for 60 yards. This time they find him right up the seam. He gets behind the linebackers, good at delivery by Van Pelt. And the big guy, he's a sophomore at 6'4", 245 out of Glen Mills, Pennsylvania. There he is. First and 10 after the 21 yard gain. You know one thing that Pitt hasn't done that they've done all along coming in is throw a lot to their backs and tight ends successfully. This is Richards. Richards rambles off over the 45 yard line lost the football. Temple is saying they've got it. The officials are acting as if they blew it dead early. And they did. Kervin Richards has had has not had a chance today. Now, granted, they've substituted a lot, alternating their tailbacks, but he really hasn't a chance to break it. And this is the kind he can do. Watch this. Up inside. Look at the balance. Now he's right there, one step away. Big play again by Lorenzo Square to make the hit. Slowed him down. That sure looks like a fumble, doesn't it? Sure does. The official rules that it is not. And that's the end of the third quarter of play. So Pitt tacks another field goal onto a 17-3 lead. They lead it here after three periods of play, 20 to 3. We now pause for a word from your local station. Getting the right information system is an uphill battle. Go to one company to get the equipment, but they can't finance it. So I find an equipment company that can finance it, but they'll only service what they sell me. So where does that leave me? Let Bell Atlantic show you the ropes with a network of companies for mobile communications and paging, leasing, financing, and computer service. But we can't help unless you call 1-800-444-8830. In order to formulate better trade relations with the United States, have devised small indigenous poem. Your comrades, you've got to hear about a great American beer. It's called Stroh's Light, bro. And it is a light like none you know. It's only fire brood light beer. Too bad we can't get it here. It's not the same as other lights. It's fire brood Stroh's light. Check it out, check it out. The freshness of an autumn morning. You can capture that down-home feeling at Haas-toberfresh, a celebration of the rich harvest at Haas's Steak and Sea House. Aromas of fresh baked breads, pumpkin cake, and apple strudel fill the air. Haas's hearty soups and chili are fresh made. And now enjoy savings on our tender filet mignon and our fresh sea scallops. Come to Haas-toberfresh at Haas's Steak and Sea House. Buying 35mm film can be confusing. It's not confusing. It's that? Look at our simple chart. Chart? There's 100. You use it here, but not here. There's 400. Use it here or there. Not here. And there. There's 1,000. Don't use it here or here. Just there. See? I see. Introducing 35mm Polaroid One Film. With One Film, you can get beautiful pictures here, there, or just about anywhere. New 35mm One Film. For beautiful pictures, the choice is easy. Welcome back to Veterans Stadium. There you see our stats after three quarters with Pitt leading Temple 20 to 3. The big one that sticks out like a sore thumb from Temple's side point, uh, standpoint. Turnovers. Four of them. Three of them have directly led to scores for Pitt. Pittsburgh with the ball. They're in Temple territory looking at second down and five for the 44. Turner in motion. Hand off to Walker. Walker gets met at the line of scrimmage and a nice tackle made by Mobley that time around. We talked with Jerry Burnt, the coach of the Temple Owls, about playing in this facility, Veterans Stadium, for their home games. Well, I love the stadium. It's a great stadium and it has, uh, it has something special to it when you look up there and you see Jim Ringo and Steve Van Buren and Norm Van Brocklin and all those Eagles names up there and the, the, the Eagles were out here before this game today and, and our kids walked by and they, they, they really excited them. The thing we need to do is play better, win a few more football games and put more people in the stands to make a little bit more electricity in here. Key third down conversion coming for that man's defense right now. Van Pelt. Gives to Turner. Turner hit by Square at the line of scrimmage, and he's not going to get the first down. Big job by Square. We talked about how they line themselves up defensively, Temple. They like to put their down people and move them and free up 
Occupy blocks on the offensive line and give Lorenzo Square a chance to get in and make the play. That time, that's exactly what he did. He is a big league player, and he can play for anybody. So a good defensive stand by Temple. It brings Brian Greenfield out on the playing surface one more time to punt away for a pit. McCoy is going deep. Kevin McCoy for Temple. There's Greenfield. And there's McCoy. Tom Huebner to snap on fourth and about two. Here's the kick. Boy will get away from this one as it rolls out of bounds at the 16-yard line. 16-yard line, the line of scrimmage, a 25-yard punt. Nails Temple inside the 20. It's Pitt 20 and Temple 3. Everything you do, you do for the driver, because ultimately, everything you do affects the driver. That is the simple philosophy behind a new line of luxury cars from Japan, Infinity. Cocktail mixes at your favorite store. An automotive designer looks at the shapes of nature, the soft lines, and because he sees things a certain way, those lines suggest an automobile design that is honest and natural, and where the driver is more important than the car itself. And what is discovered just watching nature is an ancient Japanese notion of what is beautiful. It's called Infinity. Victor Lay back into the ball game now for Temple as the Owls come up first and 10 at their own 16 yard line trailing 20 to 3 to Pitt with 13 22 left in the ball game. Lay back to throw on a short drop goes to Drayton in the flats it's complete and he's brought down about the 28 yard line he's got the first Ricardo McDonald is there to make the stop 13 no matter, yards no matter what the score of this game they've got to be pleased with Victor Lay today he's made a couple of mistakes in judgment but he's delivered the ball well as he does here that play has been there all day the quick sideline of out cut to the split receiver this time Drayton he gets a first down 13 yards on the game first and 10 at the 30 Lay has time Upfield, it is complete to McCoy. McCoy at the 39 yard line. Another first down. He tried to repeat the same play. He looked out here to Drayton. He was covered much more tightly that time by Bradley. And there, the pressure started to get to him, and he improvised and came out of this. Watch this. Number 89 is Tom Sims, who started every game last year, and he can put pressure on people. He's very active. Here comes 90 from the backside to put pressure, but he gets the ball off and hits McCoy. Number 90 is Mark Gunn out of Cleveland, Ohio. Another young defensive uh, lineman for Pitt. Give him a nine-yard gain instead of a 10, and that's going to bring up second down and one, and Temple now wants timeout. They have one remaining. As Victor Lay comes to the sideline, there you see his job on the day, the two interceptions, but still 16 out of 26. We now pause for a word from your local stations. I don't know what to do. What would you do if you were me? America's got this beer. It's called Stroh's Light. And it's uh, fire brewed. You know, it's not like any other beer. So I call the State Department and say, let's make a trade. Our cigars for your Stroh's Light. They say, Fedel, you're going to have to forget about it. It's not the same as other lights. It's fire brewed Stroh's Light. We're only 90 miles away. We can't even get a decent beer. A Pittsburgh National Home Equity Credit Line can turn your house into a bigger one with a low 9.75% introductory rate. Turn it into a new car and drive away with some big tax savings. 
or turn it into almost anything else. Because you pay no closing costs, you'll save hundreds of dollars right away. So visit or call and turn this extraordinary loan application into just about anything at Pittsburgh National. Every McDonald's Quarter Pounder, every McDLT, starts with lean, all-American beef grilled to perfection. That's the meat of America's meat and potatoes, only at McDonald's. There's a big sports event right now at McDonald's. Buy a large sandwich and large Coke and get a 22-ounce thermal sports mug for just $1.09. They're perfect for hot coffee or ice-cold Coke, but hurry, they're going fast. Welcome back to Veterans Stadium in Philadelphia. Steve Martin here along with Bob Cassiola for Great American Independent Football. Two East Indies going at it today. Pitt leading Temple 20 to 3. Temple lines up second and one at their own 39. In the fourth quarter, here's Lay. Wants to throw and gets grabbed and will go down at the 35 yard line on a sack. Tough sack there. He took it. There was great pressure by the front four, led by Gunn. And Nelson Walker came into play, the linebacker. But he was looking to go deep. He was trying to pump fake and get Drayton up the sideline against Bradley. But Drayton was well covered, and he had to take the sack. It's the third sack of the day. Ricky Henderson has hit two two-run homers, we understand. And in the top of the fifth, Oakland leads Toronto 5-1. to one. Anthony Richardson now replaces Victor Lay in the middle of the drive at quarterback. They got too many people on the field there. He's now calling, uses timeout. And that may be the last time out for Temple this half. That is. They burned three. Their defense took one. And then they took another one on that second and one just moments ago. And now they take a third and final time out here. That's the price you pay when you try to make uh, moves that create a play. That time he brought in Andy Richardson at quarterback. Had too many men on the field. Pitt leading Temple by a score of 20 to 3 with 11.35 left to go in the ballgame. When it comes to hauling, a lot of full-size pickup trucks claim to be the best. But is it the truck with the longest, deepest cargo box? Or is it the truck with the biggest maximum payload? The answer is, it's the truck with both. The big Ford pickup. Ford trucks. The toughest competition we have is ourselves. The best-built American trucks are built Ford Tough. This should give you some idea of the difference between beer and Genesee Cream Ale. Smooth Genesee Cream Ale. It's not the same old brewski. Well, guess who's back in the huddle? That's Victor Lay. They brought him off for one play, brought Richardson in. He called timeout, and Victor Lay is back into the ball game. Okay, here it is. Keep the drive alive. They haven't done much this half at all. Pit defense very tough. Third down and four. Looking for their third earned first down, the second half. Lay back to throw. Pass to scramble. He's thrown behind the line of scrimmage, and he'll not get the first down. It very gets back to the line of scrimmage. Richard Allen, Tom Sims, Mark Gunn all in around the football. The 1A defense did the job that time and put the pressure on and watch that front four. There they are. Watch the movement here, keeping him within the pocket, not letting him out of it, and then they just squeeze it on him. And that's the end of Victor Lay. Ed Liberati is back into the ball game to, pin, to punt. Back from his own 22-yard line. It'll be fourth and four. Hampton is back deep for Pitt. Coming after him with eight. Draw on the snap. There's the kick. Nice kick by Liberati. Hampton at his 17. Reverses field. Some running room through the middle. He's brought down at the 34-yard line. A 46-yard punt and an 18-yard return. Roman Hale is the man who brought him down on the tackle. And there in the third quarter, battle at Chapel Hill today. Wake Forest and North Carolina tied at 10 all. Auburn still ahead of Kentucky now in the third period. Auburn ranked 11th, coming off a tough loss to Tennessee last week. 
Penn State still leads Rutgers at the Meadowlands, 7 0. Of course, Rutgers beat Penn State at Penn State a year ago. West Virginia, only a field goal, though, trailing still in the third period, 9 3 to Virginia Tech. And look at this one Duke going against an Army secondary that's depleted by injuries, leading the Cadets 14 7 at Durham and Air Force. 14-7 better than Navy right now. Navy playing tough against the Air Force. They've got a great team. And Pell, good play action. Fate going for it all. Has Williams downfield. It is incomplete. That is Tootin, his intended receiver, down the middle. Armstrong defending. Split the coverage. Ran him right down between the safety men. He had him beat. The ball was there. And just at the last minute, it looked like Armstrong's hand came in and might have distracted him. Watch this. Watch the form on this quarterback. Beautiful delivery. There's the pass. We pick up the receiver right there and that hand right there. Looked like he grabbed him a little bit, but he got that hand in the last minute, Armstrong. And that's the difference. Tootin's made some spectacular plays today. The pit offense, second and ten. At the pit 35, hand off to Walker. Walker still on his feet at the 40. Lorenzo Square will wrestle him to a stop. He squared him up, on the play of five. Yeah, he squared <laughs> up on him. He said, this is how it looks when I square your shoulders, but you're not going anywhere. Defensively, Warren the tackle and Rush have done a good job holding the run to minimum gains, giving Square a chance to come off and make the hit. As we look at the, at the offensive line, being talked to by the coaches, the Temple offensive line trying to get some blocking adjustments, give some protection for that quarterback. Pelt sets up the throw, deep drop over the middle, incomplete intended for Eric Seaman. John Armstrong covering once again. Absolute perfect bootleg play. Quarterback comes out, looks for his tight end crossing. He's open, just overthrows him a little bit. Well, you talk about Pitt's defense, but Temple's defense has been equal to the task, although Van Pelt had time. Yet people covered out that time. Armstrong with two nice stops defensively. And that brings the punting unit on once again with Brian Greenfield. Horn Baker and McCoy are back deep. That's McCoy, the deepest of the two backs. Fourth and five to kick by Greenfield. Who? What a boom. You cover that one. Whoa. Whoa. Fumble on the play. Picked up by Pitt at the 30 yard line. And it's going to be recovered by Tom Huebner, the long snapper. Turnover of the game for Temple, and it's a disastrous one deep in their own territory at the 30-yard line. We'll see it again. That's the story of this this game, turnovers for Temple, but it's also the story of the season. As you watch the punt coming right to McCoy, he just doesn't just doesn't handle it. Gives the ball right back to the offense and the defense back on the field. This time, though, the ball's sitting on that 30-yard line. Value of having a tight end do your long snapping. He can get downfield in a hurry, and he recovers the football. There he is, Tom Eubner. And Pelt gives to Walker, but against the grain of the 25, it carries people to the 23-yard line. Lorenzo Square is there, along with Greg Liberty. And also Pat Dudley was carried by Walker, a distance of about seven yards. Temple fans looking on. This is homecoming. So you tend not to look at the scoreboard every once in a while. A chance to have a have some fun. There they are. They're having a good time. And as uh, is the Pitt Panther. A few of us would trade places with him at this moment. We have a player down on the field for Temple. Trying to get an ID. He sits at the 23-yard line. It looks like it's going to be Liberty, the outside linebacker, Greg Liberty. As Mike Gottfried looks on. Talks to Alex Van Pelt. The offense for Pitt, outside of Van Pelt's pinpoint passing, the running game hasn't really been unleashed here this afternoon. Well, that's the credit to Temple. Temple's done a good job against the run. They've played it well. They're down four linemen have attacked the run real well. And, of course, they freed up their linebackers, Square and uh, Manny Carlos, to get in on a lot of plays. The Liberty. Achilles heel has been their pass defense because Van Pelt is an has done a great job of picking his receivers well. More importantly, he's got outstanding receivers, Tootin and Williams, Jackson, and of course, occasionally hitting their tight ends. But basically, their wide receivers can all catch the ball at great speed and they can get deep on you, and they've done that today. And a very democratic process by Van Pelt. He's thrown three passes and completed three passes to his wide receivers, three to his tight ends, three to his backs. One of the things that Paul Hackett has preached to Alex Van Pelt 
has talked about uh, spreading the ball all over the field. You look at Jerry Burnt and what he's gone through in this new situation, new coach. Mike Gottfried's been in that situation. Yes, he sir. talked about it with us, uh, really. He's uh, he started up programs, tried to build programs. At Cincinnati and at, uh, also at Kansas. Jerry Burnt looking at the same thing, coming over from Rice after an 0-11 season, coming back to the city where he tasted a great deal of success. Hey, when he came here to coach the uh, University of Pennsylvania, their, their program was at rock bottom, and he, uh, he revived it. So they both uh, can sympathize with each other. As you look at Jerry Byrne along the sidelines, despite the fact that they're 0-5 so far this season, uh, we talked with Charlie Theokas, who is the athletic director at Temple, and he said, the people here just love Jerry Burnt and the job that he's done. Liberty now sitting upright. We talked about, and, and you alluded to the fact that Mike Gottfried can be indeed sympathetic to what Jerry Burr and Jerry Burnt is going through, and this is what he said about that. The toughest thing is a transition year. It's difficult because all of a sudden you're in front of a team that you didn't recruit. Now, you may have recruited 12, 15 of them, but most of them have been recruited by other coaches, and they were friends of the other coaches. They had feelings for them. All of a sudden, they're gone, and here you are standing in front of them, and it's very difficult. I, I marvel when somebody does well in a transition year because I, I'm just, and I always write a little note and send them to them because, to me, the transition year is the most difficult year you can have in coaching, and sometimes it, we're in our fourth year at Pittsburgh, and we're still in a transition, and uh, so I can imagine what he He's going through but uh, he's a good football coach and he's got uh, a good football team and hopefully eventually they're going to start to mesh and maybe I hope it's next week not this week. Well, so far Pitt has had control they're looking at second down and three handoff Walker Walker drags his way down close to the first down at the 20. Brought down on the play by Greg Angeli and also Santos Stevens on the stop and he's going to be very close to a first down. As you look at Liberty, looking at his wrist, they're trying to take his helmet off there, but he was holding his right wrist as he came off on the sideline. Okay, we've got a short yardage situation here. Big hit by Santos Stevens on the corner for Temple. And uh, Pitt is looking at a third and less than one. The ball sitting just outside the Temple 20-yard line. Clock rolling, 8.34 to go. Pittsburgh leading 20-3 to over Temple. First down here puts him in an excellent position. Full house backfield. Van Pelt calls his own number and gets it at the 20, inside the 20 to about the 19. They're having fun here. No matter what the score, this crowd is even creating a wave in the stands. Trying to create some enthusiasm behind this program here at Temple. They're working their way around. That group isn't into it yet. <laughs> They'll get there. They'll get They're there. They're coming. They're coming. We're spanning for that wave. <laughs> spanning, the, spanning the crowd for the wave. I think we're a little, yeah, we're a little, we're probably a page behind. 8.05 and rolling. Pittsburgh first and 10 at the Temple 20. Van Pelt gives to Walker. Walker sprints to the corner. Walker's still on his feet. He's close to a score, but he's going to be ruled out of bounds at the two-yard line. Driving him out, Lorenzo Square. Great blocking on the corner that time. Great blocking on the corner. The tight end gets a big block, and finally they get, a, they get Adam Walker outside. Haven't been able to do much of this today. Look at that block right there on the corner. It takes Square to come all the way from the back side. Actually, it's number 29 Armstrong, the safety, to push him out of bounds. Jimmer Bundy is the fullback. Walker the halfback. First and goal at the two. Van Pelt to Bundy. Bundy fights his way, doesn't get there. Runs into a wall of people. Constantados is there, as well as Manny Carlos, the man who delivered the first hit. Bundy's an interesting story. Bundy is, a, is probably one of the most highly recruited football players in recent years at Pittsburgh. He was a kid who had to sit out while they checked out some his academic situation, and then uh, he was cleared, and now he's back. His first tour of duty last week, he saw some action against West Virginia. He's a low. Second and goal from the two. Bundy again. Bundy close. He stopped. Got maybe a yard down to the one. And that's where Temple held tough. What a job by Greg Angeli coming in from the outside and making the hit. The defensive, he's, he lines up in that outside linebacker position, number 98. Big hit, and there he is. He's leading the cheers besides. Watch this play. There's Bundy, and he is big coming up. There's Angeli. 
closing it off in the middle. Good job in making him work for this one. David Thomas also coming in. Junior college transfer from Arizona, playing the nose, alternating there with Constantinos. Power eye formation on third and goal. Third tight end right there in the back. Here's Van Pelt taking it over himself. Temple saying he didn't get it. He didn't get it. The officials are not have marked it just short. So three cracks and they don't get it. And Pitt has to make a decision. Go for the six or bring on Ed Frazier. As I'd be very surprised if he doesn't go for this touchdown. They need a touchdown right here. Square and Carlos in on the stop. You don't see Frazier moving. There's Van Pelt. You see the surge. It's right at just inside the one-yard line. There's a surge with big defensive effort. Kenyatta Russia got a helmet in there as well. That's the distance they need to cover. It seems easy, but Temple's made it tough. No field goal attempt. They're going for six. Van Pelt, hand off to, no, he's still got it. Going to the end zone, complete for a touchdown to Huebner. Great call, great play, and give credit to Alex Van Pelt because he came out of a strong play fake. Everybody took the bite, went to the tailback. He came out of that, dropped back. He had pressure in his face. Taylor, the, the, the strong safety, came right on him, and he just got it off balance and threw it. And there was Eubner, the senior tight end from Westview, Pennsylvania, making the play in the end zone. Frazier's in the kick. Hetzler to hold. up and it is good the point after touchdown punctuates a 27 to 3 score that the Pitt Panthers have over the Temple Owls a one yard pass to Tom Huebner from Alex Van Pell. scoring drive eight plays one yard touchdown pass from Hubner or to Hubner from Alex Van Pelt his third touchdown pass of the day it comes after Temple's fifth turnover of the day as you scan the pit sidelines and the Panthers lead it here by a score of 27 to 3 527 left to go in the football game Steve Martin and Bob Cassiola live from Philadelphia Big question now with Jerry Burnt. Does he come with his uh, sophomore quarterback, uh, Anthony Richardson, give him a chance to get some work under pressure? Or does he stay with uh, his senior, Victor Lay, who's played pretty well today? Probably he's had his best game of the season. An execution, a few mistakes, but he's thrown the ball better than he has all year. Jeff Van Horn getting set to kick. Gunter and Shepard are back deep. This one's going to be Shepard two yards deep in the end zone. Brings it out to the 17 yard line and Robert Bradley was one of those who got in on the stop. Also Ricky Turner playing on special teams with Prentice Wright. Robert Bradley's been all over the field today. Big plays, big plays on defense, active, and he's also part of that kickoff team. They're going to return Victor Lay to the huddle. So Lay is back for Temple. As Jerry Burnt electing to go with his number one quarterback. He was going to alternate quite a bit today, but Lay had a strong first half. And I, I agree with you, Bob. I think he's had a fine ball game despite the two interceptions this morning. Back to throw. 
Throws to the flat, complete to Johnson at the 22-yard line, maybe up to the 23. And Barry Threets is in there on the stop. Oh, Marcus Washington or so. And, of course, uh, in this situation, look at Florida State leading up in the dome, a tough place to play at halftime. And State's got another field goal on the board to lead 10-0 over Rutgers, trying to revenge last year's loss. And look at this. West Virginia comes from behind. They're leading in the fourth. 10-9 over Virginia Tech. They were down 21-10 to Louisville last week. Hand off to Roman Hale, the fullback. Comes up over the 20-yard line to the 25. That's that's right. It was two weeks ago. Last week, of course, they were involved in that encounter with Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh. Richard Allen there on the tap. Pittsburgh, again, using their 1A defense, substituting freely ahead 27-3, 4-26 remaining in this fourth quarter. That catch, incidentally, earlier in this drive, the seventh catch for Maurice Johnson will almost equal his season's total. There's the turnover story. Sad one it is for Temple. Those turnovers, each of them have led to something, it seems. Lay back on third down across the middle. His pass is complete. And it's going to be to Johnson, his eighth catch of the day at the 36-yard line. Nelson Walker on the tackle for Pitt. But that time he paid for it. He got hit late. And he's on the ground. Stops the clock with four minutes left. Excuse me. On the ground is number 71, Ray Haynes, the senior offensive tackle. He's really played well today. His chore has been all day to block Mark Spindler. And uh, he's down right now. They moved him from offensive left tackle to right tackle so they could get a better blocker on Spindler. And it looks right now like he's got a, an injury. And our players of the game, our Schick players of the game this afternoon for Pitt. Well, it has to be Robert Bradley with that uh, fine interception, two interceptions, and he forced a fumble recovery, or forced a fumble that eventually was recovered by Pittsburgh. And Lorenzo Square, leading tackler for Temple, coming into the game, and what a fine afternoon he had. Oh, both of them. Bradley really created situations here that turned this game around in that first half and uh, has been playing hard all day as we look at him right there. And as part of the Schick Most Valuable Player Award Scholarship Program, Schick will donate $1,000 to the General Scholarship Fund of both the University of Pittsburgh and Temple University. The new Schick Slim Twin Razor System. It reaches every place on every face as you look at Lorenzo Square. Lorenzo Square from Trenton, New Jersey. He's a very special player, that kid. Outstanding pro prospect. He and Maurice Johnson looked upon as the two Temple players who uh, probably could find themselves in the NFL before long. Excellent pro prospectus. There's another guy who wears the jersey 51. He hasn't seen much action. Well, let's hope he can grow into the 51 that we just showed before. He'd be quite a player. That's Harrington. Exactly. Well, quite a legend to live up to. Square at 215. Some people say he's a little bit small for a linebacker in the NFL, but he could bulk up a little bit up to 225. As you look at Lorenzo Square once more. We still have an injury on the field. Ray Haynes, the offensive tackle being looked upon. Two Temple players have had injuries in this ball game. And they're getting ready to move Haynes from the field to proceed play here. Look at the fans looking on. Pretty good crowd on a sun-splashed afternoon in Philadelphia. Beautiful weather for a football game. A swirling wind inside the stadium. As they get set to bring Ray Haynes from the field. And he's going to get an assist. And he'll get a fine hand from the crowd here as he comes off. There's a big loss for them. They've got a lot of tough games ahead. And they know it. And they need guys like Ray Haynes around. Because he gives them size and experience at the tackle position. Good football player. Looks to me like it's, it's his right leg. Let's hope it's not as near. Temple's had a rash of injuries on their defense. Swift, Birch, fine defensive tackle is, is out. Another defensive player, two cornerbacks that slowed by injuries. Mobley's playing today. Craig Jackson is not. Of course, now Temple comes out first and 10. After the pass completion at their own 35. Here's Victor Lay. Got hit as he threw it, going for it all. Bradley covering Leslie Shepard, his intended receiver. He did get hit. Number 94 for Pitt coming in from the defensive end position. Excuse me, 94 coming in from the outside linebacker position was Nelson Walker. Well, we know about Nelson Walker. We talked about him. There he is. What a hit. Big, active from Denora, Pennsylvania. 
Chambers comes into the lineup now along with Kevin McCoy. Shepard is out. Drayton is also in. Three wide receivers in the set along with Maurice Johnson. So it's four wide outs and a lone setback. Second down and 10 at the 35. Victor Lay steps up, fires, delivers a strike to Maurice Johnson at the 42 yard line. It's a game of seven. Brings up third down and three, stops the clock. Actually, the clock continuing with 3.34 left to go in the ballgame. Here's the difference for the year can make. Pittsburgh beat Temple 42 to 7 a year ago and gained 615 yards. Today they've been held to 341, while Temple has gained 268 yards offensively this afternoon. They had 83 yards rushing at halftime. Pitt ordinarily gives up only 89 yards a game. That's 14th best in the country. So Temple can take away some small moral victories out of this one today. Here's Lay looking up top, wants Johnson. And it looks like it's going to be picked off by Pittsburgh. And it's taken by Hetzler, Doug Hetzler, who's normally the holder on field goals, as we see it again. Watch this. Perfect coverage here. He's throwing upfield. He's trying to get the fly pattern to his wide receiver, to his tight end, who split as a wide receiver. But they had him in two safeties. They split the field, and Hetzler came beautifully covering half the field and made the interception. You can't do it any better than that. Six turnover of the day. Pitt coming back with the ball with a big lead. We now pause for this from your local station. Jeanette was beautiful, living a storybook life. She left her hometown to be a beauty queen in Hawaii. She had what it took to take her to the top. But when she lost the Miss Hawaii pageant, her dream was shattered. And on the night she watched the crowning of our new Miss America, Jeanette stepped onto a balcony and entered the dark side of paradise forever. Death of a beauty queen. A Current Affair, Monday at 7 on WTAE-TV. Welcome back to Veterans Stadium in Philadelphia. The closing moments of this one between Pitt and Temple, two great American independents. Pittsburgh got to a big lead, 27 to 3, but it hasn't been that easy for them. And the football now nosed up to the 29-yard line after the sixth turnover of the day. And now a new quarterback in the game for Pittsburgh, and that is going to be Scott Stark. Stark, who is a junior, Mission Valley, California. Gives to Ricky Turner, bounces outside. Flag thrown on the play. Tackle made at the 32-yard line there by Gary Mobley. Also Fenwick getting up, but Mobley's not getting up quickly. Shows the ability of Pittsburgh to recruit. Scott Stark, the quarterback, number 12, is a junior. He comes out of Mission Vallejo, California. He played at uh, Saddleback Community College. They are one of the most renowned passing schools in California and he was outstanding there. He's only been in two games. He's had five attempts for two completions but he has a great delivery a great release very smart. They like him a lot and coming all the way from California. He's the backup quarterback Scott Stark. Scott Stark see himself backed up another 10 yards with a holding penalty. 6-2 195. And Alex Van Pelt done for the day after another fine day offensively here today. Ball will be back at the 19 yard line first and 20 for Pittsburgh. And the clock moving with 242 left to go in the football game. Start gives to Turner. Turner gets back to the 20 gain of about one. Santos Stevens in on the stop. There's Van Pelt his day's work. It wasn't 300, but it uh, wasn't bad. Three touchdown passes. Well, like they came early with a lot of tight end formations, two tight end formations, tried to run the ball on early downs, and really only threw the ball when it became the obvious situations, and he delivered the football. 
and we saw enough of him today to realize his accuracy in throwing the ball deep is, is really phenomenal. He puts the ball right where it has to be. And for a young quarterback, he has really made this team go. And Tootin, Williams, and Huber touchdown passes. Second down, about 19. Ball is tipped and nearly intercepted. Almost coming away with was Manny Carlos on the tipped ball. It's going to be incomplete. David Thomas apparently got his hand on it. Number 99 is Thomas. You'll see him in the left corner of your screen as he comes in here. Here's the drop by Stark as he goes to deliver the ball. There's 99 getting up. Big play. Good effort. Temple defense has been out there a lot here, especially in the second half. But they have played well. Played well, especially against the run. But as you said, Alex Van Pelt has done just enough to keep Pittsburgh at arm's length and then some. Third down, about 19. Raw play. To the fullback. Still on his feet. He's hard to bring down, and he moves ahead. That's Jimmer Bundy out to the 27 yard line. It's like in on the play of seven. It's like a bowling ball trying to tackle him. You can see once he gets going, he is he is big. And he reminds them a lot of Ironhead. You remember who that was? Craig Hayward. That's now, right. In the employ of the New Orleans Saints. It's going to be a gain. Jimmer Bundy. Two. Remember that name. You're going to hear it more. Seven like him a lot. Greenfield is back to punt. Kevin McCoy to receive deep for Temple. Wow. Nice kick by Greenfield. He's had a bunch of them. Back to the 32 yard line called for a fair catch by Kevin McCoy. And now it's time for our option play of the game brought to you by option gray coverage for men the advanced way to get rid of the gray. We take you back to the first quarter of play with 215 left. It is Henry Tootin and he'll take a 33 yard pass from Alex Van Pelt. And we say that but it wasn't that easy as you take a look at it. And look at where the delivery is. Look at the extension and look at the concentration and the ability to hold on to that football. And it's a catch a great catch by Henry Tootin. But he's done that throughout his career as you look at the bench where he's sitting back in the bench. Off offsetting penalties here. Oh, both on pit. That's they went right. to pit. But anyway, getting back to Henry Tootin, he's done that throughout his career. What a threat he is. And of course, that touchdown pass, incidentally, gave Pitt the lead that they would never give up on the 33 yard pass after Temple had kicked the opening field goal to take the lead three to nothing. 27 unanswered points. Victor Lay is going to come back into the ball game here as they mark off the penalties against Pitt. Making they're making the options available to Lay, and he's going to announce what he's going to take. Legal procedure decline. The illegal, the personal foul call is going to be accepted, so it'll be 15 yards from the 32-yard line. So Temple declines on the illegal procedure they did they choose to accept the bigger penalty and it'll bring them out to the 47 yard line that's eight penalties on pit for 81 yards this afternoon <laughs> elsewhere around the country fourth quarter they're having it out in Chapel Hill aren't they Wake Forest looking for their first victory 17 16 after North Carolina missed a two point conversion Auburn staying ahead of Kentucky now in the fourth quarter 21 6 it's 27 3 here hit on top Temple with the ball lay back the throw steps up as a man out in the flats that's Tom Quinn it's incomplete at the 44 yard line Tom Quinn is the backup tailback he plays behind Benjamin Stevenson Elsewhere, Penn State shutting out Rutgers. They just haven't gotten their offense going. We knew Penn State was a strong defensive football team. Maryland trying to deny Georgia Tech their first ACC win. 21 14, that game in Atlanta today. And Duke was pulled ahead of Army 21 7 there at intermission. They were concerned about that when they knew Duke could throw the football. Air Force starting to move ahead at halftime over Navy 21 7. We'll see Navy next week against Pittsburgh in Pitt. Here's Lay. Lay goes back, passes, and it is complete. Looks like Drayton out there. No, that's not going to be Drayton. That's going to be Hornbaker. Hornbaker should remember to get out of bounds. <laughs> Stop that clock. 42 seconds remaining in the football game. 
looks like it's going to be close to a first down, which will stop the clock so they can move the chains. Or did he? No, it's going to be second down, a third down in inches for Victor Lay. As soon as they spot the ball, they'll start the clock again. As Lay looks toward the sideline and Jerry Byrne. They've got to go with Victor. He's a senior. They want to bring naturally Richardson along slowly, but they've got enough games left that they feel maybe if he can develop a little bit more, they can stay in it. Third down and inches. Victor Lay steps up, fires a pass, looking for Shepard overthrown. And that stops the clock with 34 seconds left, bringing up fourth down and inches. Shepard just ran out of running room down there. Third down. Now it'll be fourth down and inches here for Temple. As they're just trying to get a score for pride here for their homecoming crowd. They played well, better than the 27 3 score indicates. Their defense has come up with a key stop on numerous occasions. They've, as Bob has pointed out, forced them to go away from the run, forced Van Pelt to complete key third down passes, which he did, and proved that he's an outstanding quarterback. But the six turnovers, just too much for Temple to overcome this afternoon. Big delay, fourth down goes to Roman Hale, and he's got the first down at the 39 yard line of Pitt. Stops the clock with 28 seconds left to go. They're going leading. without a huddle now. Trying to get on the board before this game is over. There's Lay, and he'll throw it away, intended for Hornbaker, but actually intended to stop the clock, which he did with 23 seconds left to go. I want to thank our stat man, Chuck Gardner, who's done an outstanding job here today. Stage manager, Joy Lovitz. Our spotter, Bob Geary. Yeoman job up here in the booth today. Thank you all for your help. We also thank Al Schreier of Temple, Sports Information Director there, Sports Information Director at Pitt, Larry Eldridge and Linda Benson. Virginia Tech, we understand, has taken the lead back again from West Virginia with five minutes to go in that one at Morgantown, an upset in the making at Morgantown this afternoon. Second down, Victor Lay looking upstairs. Wants it all. He wants Shepard in the end zone and overthrows it. That stops the clock with 15 seconds left. And it'll bring up third down and 10. Look at some of uh, Pitt's backups in the defensive secondary. That was Dave Coleman who was covering on that particular play. Shepard, who's got speed to burn out there. Coleman's a sophomore from Youngstown, Ohio. 15 seconds remaining in the ball game. The Pitt Panthers leading the Temple Owls by a score of 27 to 3. Victor Lay looking at third and 10. He's back. Throws complete to Jenkins, but he dropped the ball. They say incomplete. Snell was there to cover the linebacker. That stops the clock with eight seconds left, bringing up fourth down and 10. And this, in all likelihood, will end the contest. Mike Gottfried is, uh, when you think about the word he uses, focus, he kept them in line. He's, he's winning 27 to 3. He's got a feel that he came away with a, a good enough effort to win. He was concerned about it, perhaps coming in here and people taking tempo lightly with their record, but this club played well enough to win, and that's a sign of a good football team. Lay back to throw. Throws over the middle for Shepard. Do they say he completed it? Yes, they do at the 23 yard line, but time runs out and the ball game is over. As the Pitt Panthers now up their record to 4 0 and 1 with a 27 to 3 win over the Temple Owls. Temple now dipping to 0 and 6. They take on Boston College next week for Pittsburgh. They'll come back home and they'll take on the midshipmen of Navy next Saturday afternoon. That game, of course, will be at uh, Pitt Stadium. Navy, of course, losing at last blush, 21 to 7 to Air Force. As you see, Mike Gottfried and Jerry Byrne meet at midfield. Let's see if we can listen in. Oh, 